Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Blitz from Team Liquid! Blitz, another game with them picking Sniper against you. I know you guys lost to Sniper a few times, but everyone seems to think this is your weakness here. Have you guys fixed this? I mean, you did survive Aster after all. No, nah, it's pretty broken against us. We just kind of hope our best, you know, don't pick it, but... You know, I hope Tundra also just keeps first phasing it. It'd be pretty fun. <laughs> Uh, last pick, Primal Beast, the, the crowd was gasping out there. Very unexpected to come that late in the draft. Any particular reason why you guys did it so late? Yeah, I mean, it takes a little bit to recognize the situations where the hero's gonna be good. Uh, somebody suggested it, it sounded pretty nice, and yeah, I mean, Mickey seemed like he really wanted to play it. Uh, it's a fun main stage hero too, you know? We're also here to entertain and stuff like that. Rezzle told me before, let's just have good games. Uh, All right. Exciting. Absolutely. And any words out there to uh, silencer counterpickers for first pick Enigma out there watching right now? Do you feel like that's a dirty tactic or is that completely fine? I think we're like 6-0 and against silencer with Enigma in this tournament. No, no, that's not trash talk. Oh, oh man! <laughs> it's, just, it's just math. <laughs> it's just math. Well, you know, math can never be toxic and I'm 100% sure that this will be one heck of a game. So let's shoot it over to our casters. Oh my goodness. Sir Action Slacks always there to let us know that math is not toxic, mm. um, but what is toxic is his pub play. As Trent, we get ready to go into this lower bracket finals, Liquid versus Secret. We're here, it was last chance qualifier teams, and they made it the whole freaking day. How's it going? Another last chance qualifier. It's the same thing, right? That's all the lower bracket final really is. <laughs> it's your last chance to get there, to the grands, to fight them once again. Hmm. I, it's true, definitely. As we already paused uh, in this game, we, we talked to the pros, you know, mm -hmm. we had the wonderful Taiga ATF on. They seemed, even though they weren't willing to fully say it, uh, as even though they were, they were incredibly biased <laughs> for the teams <laughs> they wanted to win. Exactly. Um, of course, is the, the sort of background there. Chris Liss, the former teammate of ATF, and then all of Liquid, pretty much, the former teammates of Taiga. Uh, but they are going to be having to watch on from the sidelines here as we get into this game. Matumba Man playing on the Life Stealer here. Uh, is already sitting in this mid lane. What do you think about that Primal Beast pick? It, it got there towards the end. They said it's a crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's very interesting because, uh, well, like said, you, know, you want to appease the crowd, the Primal Beast, sure. But Primal Beast, you know, when you think about some of the problems the heroes had, you, you can see them on the other side. Like, when, when I'm playing against Primal Beast and I'm getting upset, all I can think are things like, man, I wish I could send this through BKB. Like, no one pick a BKB stun for this game because this hero relies on it so heavily, right? Like, that's the whole kit of this hero is just relying. It doesn't matter what role, you're trying to get that BKB as fast as you can. And he's going to have to dealing with the roar as well as that global silence. So very frustrating stuff for a primal beast. I think there's a good reason that it got left in that late. But as our lovely panelists were pointing out here, this idea of just winning the lanes, winning the game off of that early advantage that you're gonna get, primal beast is really frustrating the lane against too. We saw some of the most dominant performances in a long time in that in the LCQ has fallen by the wayside a little bit. A nice stun to start this out. And it does look like indeed they're gonna be able to pick up a couple of these bounty runes uh, heading down to the south there. We'll have to watch and wait as two apiece, Chrysalis Forcing back Boxy a bit, who again has just looked so good on this Tusk, on Melee Fours in general. He's been having a great tournament. Yeah, kind of, uh, you know, we were talking about this idea of you can't ban out ATF, you can't ban out Boxy at this point, right? The Marcy, the Tusk, and the Clockwork, at least to me, like throughout that last chance qualifying and coming to TI, have just all been super solid for him. I feel like his rotations have been the storyline for Liquid, uh, whereas on the side of Secret, it's a lot of this discussion about what's happening with Rezo and Zayas there. But we're watching this mid lane here, and you want a long time storyline for Team Secret, it is Nisha with the Morphling. Mm. Right, this is a, a player hero combo who has been feared and for a Dyer's very long time would just be banned in the first phase, a, even when Morphling wasn't necessarily like the best hero in Dota. Right, and right now it literally feels like there's games where it is the best hero in Dota. You take over the stats of the other heroes with that Aghanim Scepter build, uh, and then it just feels like an unstoppable monster. So, uh, again, we'll have to see if they can build up that momentum through the landing stage and get themselves where they want to go on Team Liquid. Uh, is already blocking off that small camp. The Tumba Man pulls the wave back behind. They're going to get the D ward and then go and contest. I do think it's interesting to see the like formation setup that you're going to have from Team Secret this game because like two of your cores, I feel like in a pub, you might not be that excited about having Morphling and Sniper on the same team, right? Right. They don't tend, you know, they could kind of have like a similar role and idea, but it, it also depends on like the various ways that you can play the Morphling. You can be a little bit more active on this hero. You have so many cool options and combinations that you can do now uh, with the changes to the ultimate on the hero where you're becoming this opposite hero and trying to like take advantage of their abilities while also reducing their stats. Yeah, 
It's incredibly strong. So bring around the Rosie there. So he heads off. We'll get punched a few more times on his way out. And again, this very annoying lane that you have to deal with of the Enigma continuing to eat up your range creeps the whole time through. Um, already four denies on him there, but hasn't been able to have a great time against Chrysalis, who mm -hmm. uh, has been able to zone him back a little bit, it looks like. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure on Zai in this lane as well, because they spent a lot of their draft trying to deal with this, right? They're looking towards all these various heroes that can be placed into this role uh, that can try and handle the Eidolons early and reduce the impact that you're going to have with that kit of the hero. And uh, at this point, it's not looking too hot, obviously, especially um, with those nerfs to the Eidolons taking so much more match damage. Zayat's... Trapnel can actually hurt him. The Mango doesn't want to go for it, I would Sanya and Zayats is just going to salve up. So gets away from that one. You can see the pressure that's put on early by Lich. Sanya keeping him just back there at arm's length. Feel the tension in here. I know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that first coming at the low heroes all around. I think it's one of those things, too, where, you know, these two teams, there's so much respect for each other. They played against each other a lot in the DPC. Um, you know, and there's, you saw at the beginning, some, some mutual admiration that's going on. Gonna be a good series. Go, man. Safe draft, safe lanes. Everyone just chilling out. But you know, safety is not necessarily the best thing for Team Liquid, as uh, you know we're dis uh, discussing throughout the, the draft here. This idea of you know, getting this early lead, getting this early head start. Three minutes in, they're they're not really there yet. No, but they do play a little bit of intercept there. Boxy trying to keep his Enigma from taking too much damage, but using a lot of rounds of that shrapnel. Boxy trying to walk away, trying to survive. A couple more punches, one more hit. He's not gonna go down. Barely keeps himself alive, but you can see the pressure that they're putting on bottom. Those branches keeping him up. Backpacks him, salves up, wants to stay in the lane, keep that focus pressure here for Zai. I wonder if that opens up a little bit more space for themselves too, since that was all of the shrapnel charges uses from the sniper. And in fact, Boxy, yeah, wants to get a little bit aggro. They couldn't get the kill. Come at the king, best not miss. Can they bring it down? Chrysalis, though. Couple more punches, slowed. Fairy fire backs away. Flirting with some great some body blocks coming in from Zai, uh, but they will get away. And that aggressive vision plays down there, almost helping them get that kill. Only try and get a couple chances there, just narrowly missed by the sentry that was there from Team Secret as well, but doesn't result in the kill this time. Just burns up a lot of that regen that was there from Chrysalis. And Puppy got a little bit of time off, just kind of wandered around, got some stacks. Scaling things out. No. Uh, up top, Zyatz has also been very free. I think he's is still level one. He's about to be level two, you know, to his credit, but he's been giving a lot of space to resolution right now. And th this is not really the dynamic that we've seen a lot from these two, right? They tend to play very together in the lane, very kill heavy, kill centric. Uh, whereas this time, it's like Rezo's going to be planting himself in this top lane as Beastmaster for a very long time. And I feel like Zyatz is actually going to be playing a little bit more uh, with these. Primal should. Beast, he cometh. Mickey is there. Gets the first blood. Takes out Chrysalis. And this is the power of this hero, really. At level five, making these rotations and still not missing out on much mid. Shards? Oh! Boxy just a little off the mark there. That was max range. A bit close on that one, but uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of speaks to how these lanes are going because, like, Mickey almost feels pressured, I think, to make that, that move around, right? And uh, you're, you're thinking about all these heroes that you're hoping to bully in the lane phase by just out damaging them. Morphling, unfortunately, not the easiest one to do that with. If you don't have an actual kill threat, you don't have that chain stun to worry about, he can just sit on this max Agi, and he's got that big damage to actually compete with a, a Primal Beast. So, Team Secret looking very strong at the moment. This has been a constant from them. Level 5 on Rezo as Matamba Man's coming on in to contest this pull again. Still has to deal with those boars plinking away at him. Very even. You can see that uh, right now it's mainly the Enigma that's been the one that's sort of been left by the wayside in terms of those other boars. Uh, likewise, though, bringing down that sniper's net worth with all those denies. They're going to move towards the river here, though, as they try and contest the runes. It's going to spawn top. Couple punches. Nisha right there. A DD is very strong on Morph. But will manage to get out of there. Mickey gets the jump out. Zion is still Dyer's sticking around. Glitch going to be used. Boxy makes the move over. Radiant structures are fortified. And there with the DD. <laughs> yeah, right? So much damage. The early on. Double damage. stun. Chase. Mickey. In some trouble. Snowball to dodge the waveform. Keeps him alive. And Mickey is just going to head back home. Nice rotation as Boxy. Keeps that mid from going down. Yeah, I gotta find some bit of XP here on the Tusk. I, I do think that's important as they are gonna need some help rotating through these lanes. It's never gonna hurt getting that XP early, but Nisha just keeps on going with that catapult. This is so much damage onto this mid tower with that TD in hand. 
and keeping that catapult alive. They had a really good push onto that mid lane at just seven minutes. Mickey hops on back, gets a free bottle over to Boxy. <laughs> gets a grab. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. No. He's gonna get out of there, I think. He's trying to switch over strength for him. Snowball keeps him on him. Stun. Couple more punches coming from the tower. Mickey low puppy rotating in as well. But they aren't quite gonna be able to chase him down. And Boxy gonna try and TP out. No such luck with Nisha right on hand, but they're still too strong. Yeah, so big strength heroes. Very low on the damage right now, right? Like outside of the morph link, you know, the actual damage being provided by a, uh, a Nyx Assassin and a Silencer isn't too great right now when they're both such low level. So it was a good attempt, I think, from Liquid. I think they understand again that they, they really need these earlier kills. So trying to grab something like Nisha, like how often do you see a morph link die that fast, right? Oh yeah, where they just get caught on that, that low strength. Now it's chased into the trees. Throws down the trap and all. Zai is maybe in a bit too far as he's gonna get stunned in secret. Ready to turn this on to the Enigma. A couple more punches and it is gonna be enough. Zayak picks up the kill. This is the second kill of the game here in this uh, slow burner right now in this top lane. We have not seen a whole lot of, but obviously the top of the board is Matu. Sitting uh, with the almost 60 CS right now, but Rezo right up there uh, alongside him. Yeah, a thousand gold behind, true. But uh, he's a very high level, uh, six and a half right now because he's just had no support in his lane, much like uh, these early rotations of Insania. But this rotation here should bear some fruit as the snowball will come out, but Boxy shards the high ground. Not quite this time, there's a tree in the way. So, secret, pick up another one. Two on the board. And Rezo even uh, making a, a little move over here. Just seeing what's going on, checking out his jungle. He's got his helm creep, so he can farm it up a little bit right now. Very difficult to pressure Matu out of the lane at this point with a, a, a heavy rotation, and he's got a sniper and a morphling. So not not seeing the, the biggest uh, group up play. He's going to top lane at the moment here from Team Secret. Instead, they're sort of just focused on keeping everyone farming at the moment. And uh, really holding this positioning mid with Zayats and Puppy, trying to pressure this mid tower. And besides, you know, the Frost Shield's not up for 10 seconds. This looks pretty free. Yeah, they're taking it down. No Glyph available, moves in, gets the tower, doesn't get the last hit. That time was spent with Primal Beast farming the jungle a little bit and was able to pick up some nice bits of farm for himself. As I can't quite get the connection there. But they do give up that mid tower. So. It feels like Liquid really need to find some sort of a, a play across the map here with Mika. I mean, you can't really wait for the BKB. Even with the BKB, there's obviously so many counters versus it, but uh, I'm definitely feeling the pressure of them making moves right now. Chrysalis, Snowball, ooh, barely gets there in time. They're dropping down like hold the go. Gets interrupted there. Zai, well, they might still be able to chase him down with all these Eidolons. Is it going to be enough in the end? A couple more punches, and it is. But Liquid get the TP out after finding the kill. And Mickey actually TP's down right after as well. Though. So, I mean, right on the wave as well, like fully spotted out from Secret. And he's actually going for the punish. Oh my god, moves on in. <laughs> I don't care if you saw me, I'm still coming. God, the inevitability of Primal Beast is too freaking strong. So 10 minutes in now, Radiance and a couple good tower. moves. This is what you attack. wanted to see from Mickey, making it happen. That part is great, but I also really love what Zayat and Nisha did. Like, the way that they, they brought the Morphling and the Nyx Assassin, they just kind of camped in that top dire jungle, and that, that allowed Rezo to also push in through the tower. It was too much pressure on Batu. He had to leave the area, and suddenly Secret are just playing all up inside that Radiance territory. Yeah, they attack. have claimed that top awesome. tower. And there is a smoke now moving down through the jungle. They're gonna run right into Matu. Roar, he gets the rage off. Will it be enough to escape? The stun is there. Waveform through the infest. He got inside your creep, moving away from him. Can they get him out afterwards though? They have the frost shield for round. And Mickey makes the rotation, finds the boat, the double kill right on top. Oh, Matu got saved. His team was there, the creep was there. And Puppy is gonna get Walrus punched out of oblivion. Got an inside agent on the side of Team Secret here, it would appear. <laughs> That's Seder. Oh, I guess uh, the mind stealer this time was Matu hopping in there. The one play he could make, the, the only possible way to get out of there. He found it. Gosh, got it indeed. It's, what is it with the infests in this team? I don't know. Yeah, something. I <laughs> keep picking him life stealer. It just keeps working. Wow, two to six. A 
Well, that was such a big play for Secret 2. That was like the reward for all of the, the area of the map they've been holding. This pressure, forcing Matu into that mid lane, catching him on the rotation back to his own side of the map. Everything was like coming together exactly how you expect from Secret. And then just like one little mistake, and he just gets out. Slips through your fingers. Just like that, that's all it takes to give a little bit of life here to Liquid. We've seen a ton of these games. It feels like, you know, we talk about the path of both of these teams coming from last chance qualifier, but in reality, it feels like they've played very different tournaments. Secret has been, you know, coming in and just dominating people sometimes in the draft. Liquid, they've had to grind out these matches. Let's see what ends up happening here is Insania. He's going to get caught. The Impale is there. A couple more punches. And your int is puppies. Honestly, I'm blind. Very happy. I'm running. I'm tipping, but. Okay, I got you. I got you. I'm coming, 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 coming. I'm really strong. 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 Go, 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 go. They all died. Go, 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 go,
Yeah, they don't really have Red Zone a great spot right now necessarily in terms of like trying to pressure the Roche, but that could be something with the next pick off perhaps for Team Secret that they could be thinking about. Uh, and then of course, you also have to consider that Team Liquid are very good at fighting in that space. It'll be a battle of the vision that's available for Team Secret, the, the cooldown of Global Silence. It's gonna be very important for Puppy as well. It's gonna be a lot of factors in play to decide who actually controls that part of the map and who has an opportunity to get that Aegis. I have bunching for you. Right now, the vision is incredible from Team Secret, by the way. Excellent wards in combination with the Hawks means they're seeing pretty much everything Liquid are up to right now. And getting into that Manta style here pretty soon for the Morphling. Curious how quickly he wants to go in for that Aghanim Scepter. We've seen it a lot against the Agi carries. Obviously, still really good against these strength cores where you get to steal their status resistance away. Um, as he, <laughs> Foxy's trying to use the, the Seeds of Serenity. His arm's just not long enough to get that punch on the ward. We'll get over there soon, surely. Yeah, it's oh, gonna bring the keep carrier. Working, yeah, maybe worried about them playing around or something. You can see Vicky's doing like little loops, not exactly sure where they are. As, uh, they don't Radiant have the best vision. They've got one lingering ward up top that is sort of spawning uh, some of these moves to that top half of the map, but overall, Liquid playing a little bit dark right now. They do spot some wards there, as well as the Morphling moving through, and that Mantis Sal now complete. Also, that courier that Zai's placed really deep from the Nyx Assassin is so good. It's like it's spotting couriers constantly. It's just seeing everything that they're up to. It's showing like everyone inside that dire jungle where they're positioning. It's so strong. It's, it's one of those things that like bounty hunters and Nyx assassins can often get placed. Well, for now at least, they will just throw out a spike carapace there, trying to contest for the rune. Nisha picks up the illusion. And the dire are scanning right now. That, that's how unsure they are of like what's happening right now, right? Yeah. They're behind him. but ready to go. Gotta watch this carapace. It's level four right now. Could botch an initiation that comes in, especially if you're not careful with that first BKB play. Still playing around this area. Nisha, they roll in, miss on the cam, but find a couple more. Spike he carapace in up with the roll in, finds him, and Nyx is dead. Buyback immediately, global to turn this. They only have the tusk in hand though. Now turning on to Zai, the fear, interrupting. Zai has black hole available if they want to drop it with global already down, but there's so much damage coming from the high ground. He's just caught and killed. It did cost a couple buybacks, but Secret, they win that fight. The duality of Nisha's abilities on this Morphic as well, right? Like copying into the Primal Beast, charging, and he's becoming that body, and then charging in right after him is just the creeps coming in from Rezo, right? And they're just like filling in this space. Crystal has a full-on vanguard of units and heroes ahead of him, gives him the space for the damage. You can see the inability of Zai to really play this engagement, and instantly for the prize of that victory, Secret heading towards Roche. Yeah, that is huge for them. So they're going to get this one out, and Liquid, uh, obviously aware that this could have been happening after they won that fight, will split up and try and get the farm on. But again, this game, feeling right now as if it's leaning towards Secret. That's uh, pretty accurate, I would say. I, I feel like the later this thing is go, you know, we, we talked about this idea of, like, sure, late game, you tend to look towards the Nick. He's going to have this big black hole, yay, ho but the Global Science is always going to be there. And to be concerned about the entire time. Doesn't mean it's a you know a permanent counter, like you know, Blitz said, right? What's six and over versus silencer? He's got the numbers, <laughs> he did the evil math or whatever it was. That's right. And well, of course eventually you imagine that Zai is gonna Radiance need more farm than the silencer to get to a refresher or what have you. Um, but of course the other thing is gonna be how do these little skirmishes work out? Can they find and catch that sniper in an open field? The open wounds picked up from a tumble man now. They might be ready to go. Let's see if they can take a fight here. Insania goes on in, catches the Invis and still good vision all over that top side of the map from Secret. Got ourselves the, uh, the single core staff. You know, obviously seeing a lot of the strength of the, uh, the multiples, right? Stacking those core staffs. That's something that Team Secret will probably have. With, uh, they're going to have the Hurricane Pike on Chrysalis. You have the core staff on Puppy. And that's an item, much like Lincoln Spear, I would say, is the other one, where the more that you stack them and the more that you have on your team, the stronger they feel, right? Oh, yeah. Pull you this way, push you that way again. Suddenly the whole fight gets pulled and, and spread out. And that's something that Liquid really don't want to see because they have this, this tusk, right? He kind of commits to an area, so you get four staffed out, your fight breaks down. A life stealer, one of the items he hates seeing the most is his four staffs. He's trying to stick on people as the maybe the open wounds will help him with. So getting there for Puppy's actually gonna be pretty important for them. Zaya runs into a wary little Nyx assassin and they're gonna bring down that Enigma eventually. Even cleaning up that rate pack for afterwards. So Secret, after claiming that Roche, they can play bullies for a little bit here. And Liquid, they're going to need to find some answers elsewhere. Picks over that creep so he doesn't give up the bounty. Nicely played. 
as that Helm of the Overlord is done. Well, at the very least, they will wind up keeping some of their vision in this area. Is that a hurricane effect as well for Nisha? Oh, damn. Okay. All right. We got we got movement all over the place now. They're going to have a triple four staff here on the side of Team Secret once Poppy finishes his. It's done. Okay, triple four staff. So, oh, no. Uh, good luck, Matu. Yeah. You know what doesn't help you with that, though, is if you get caught in a big black hole. That's that's going to be the, the sort of go-to, oh, I would imagine. See if it works out, though. Obviously, still very tough. Snowball catches onto the creep. Tumba Man beats it up. Flex that bounty. Everyone came in for that one. They were a little concerned a fight was happening there. And well, vision, vision, vision. The Hawk spotting these rotations through. Seeing that everybody is here. Team Secret, they, they really see everything. Like this ward is going to be living to its full life. 15 seconds left. You know, salute to you. Good sir. You, you did great. Fantastic ward. Playing with map haps, the basically. Hawk is just spotting them right now. Like, this it, it's so hard. Yeah, it, it's devastating. It's so good. See if they can find anybody else. It does get taken out there. As Liquid gonna try and reconvene themselves. A minute and a half left on this Aegis, roughly. As Nikkei tries to finish off his Aghanim Scepter, uses the Pulverize. Rezo finds him, walks around the corner. They do still have BKB TP, but not nearly enough. Too much damage coming out from that more play. And moving everyone together, gonna catch that wave as well. Bring that back up, get in here, get this outpost if they want. Retake this territory in, in Liquid. I mean, what can you do? Do you want to try and make a play on the other side of the map? That That's really the only place they have a ward, but they know there's nothing going on down there. They have a ward inside their own jungle. It's probably not going to last that long, as it is just like sitting upon a pillar, so it tends to get obviously scouted pretty fast. Besides, run through with these sentries. So just waiting out this Aegis right now from Team Liquid and seeing if they can find an opportunity for a fight. Zayat's just walking right by Boxy there. Some creeps coming in. They spot him out. Ooh, it's a little bit of separation there. Got eyes on them, and that keeps him alive for now. Nisha wants that uh, level 18 before he morphs. There you go. And yeah. I got that nice 60 second cooldown there. This is such a strong power spike from Secret with all of their things coming together and a couple of seconds left on this Roche. We'll see if they stick around. It does look like they're going to back at least for now. So stock of the game at this point, it's a 5,000 gold lead after that first Aegis and Secret looking incredibly strong. They've got the Blink Dagger done on Rezo now too. For Liquid, what do you see as their sort of avenue and how they need to deal with this game here? I mean, I think Mickey's got a pretty interesting idea, right? Going for the Aghanim stuff there on the Primal Beast. Just a like total team fight victory attempt, I feel like, you know, just trying to, they, they just have to like find some fight. They have to force a fight, they have to stay in it. They have to try and get these stuns, trying to find crystals on the back lines. I think you just have to assume that the global's gonna get off. Yeah. It's very unlikely you're gonna catch the silencer first, right? So it's it's gonna be a long haul team fight. It's gonna be very reliant on like the Wraith pack maybe having a big impact, but that can obviously be very tough versus a Morphling and a Sniper. Yeah, that is incredibly difficult. So and you can even play probably in pretty far as Nisha if you get that extra status resistance from the Ags. And then the other hard part is that they don't really have the best heroes for just like pushing out the waves, right? I mean, you can see how Boxy has to play on, on a Tusk. Not not really uh, the best hero for this. He's gonna head on home. They, they don't have those uh, sneakier uh, lane exploders that just like pop the creeps and get away, to try to delay this game. So sooner or later, they're gonna have to find this fight. And I, what I like about Team Secret is that they already had the tier twos very early. And they, they got this Aegis and they didn't try and like pressure the high ground or something ridiculous with that first Aegis. There's no point, right? Like, yeah. Wait for the second Aegis. You're controlling so much of this map right now between your wards, your hawks, your Nyx Assassin, so much vision. They, they see what Liquid are up to and I'm sure they, they're well aware that they are taking the lead. Yeah, and they don't even like, I was talking about the Aghanim Scepter, but Nisha is just going in for the Scotty. He's opting to go for this, just beat them down, right click build. Uh, be a little bit tanky in there with it too is well another sacrifice here keep it over to the gods it's gonna be insania brought down can the rest of them get out matambo man he's raged snowball in to try and get him away is mickey he's yeah, getting committed. pummeled nisha chase nisha kill a double for the morph ready to go in for a bit more insania he bought back for this one he's got to get out of there the chain drops but well, look at him go they're on top of boxy he is also gonna go down but tumble man looking for a bash hoping to go toe to toe gets more but secret they are having none of it devastation up on the high ground is 
26 minutes in, this is Elena Rax. This is so much of, of just complete total effective damage. It's just the patience from Team Secret. They knew everything that was happening in this game, and they're just waiting for that time, because they see that Liquid is a ticking time bomb of how they need to play this draft. Eventually, they're going to force a fight, and sometimes it can be okay when a support just feeds in like that, where Insania dies, because it gives you a little bit of vision, and it maybe burns a couple stuns, and then you can go for that fight. Maybe that's their best moment, but Secret were willing and ready. Secret. Just all over them here, and they will claim two sets of racks as soon as one of those boars or something comes on up to the high ground. But that blink dagger reveal from Zayat and a Matumba man, he's in pretty far, wants to take him down, gets one kill. So able to assassinate the assassin, but it is a pure victory if I ever saw one, as it is a 14k gold lead now after that high ground push. Ah, that's a big one. And that's how it started, you know? This comes in, couple heroes are in vision, you think, okay, is this our chance? And they, they thought about backing, but then the roar occurs, Mickey's forced to commit. Didn't really get a whole lot of value out of the Agnes, I would say. And then, of course, uh, Nisha becomes better primal beast. Zai found again. Nisha immediately gets out of there. The haste rune keeping him alive, ready to chase after Foxy now with the Scotty done. They gotta run. Catches on to this Beastmaster. Do they have any more buybacks? It's already three dead. This is looking so rough for Liquid. Mickey, he's got a life stealer bomb inside of him, but Nisha ready to take him down. The triple kill. Nisha will not be denied as they kill them all off. They love Dota so much, but it's secret that are coming away with this one. And these are the two different stories these teams have had. Team Liquid, they've come into these games that maybe haven't looked the best in terms of the draft. They managed to GG. follow the game. They find that win, but Secret, they pick great drafts, they get these good lanes, and they just dominate the way through. It seems like they have a solid plan, they stick to it, and they get the W, and this looks exactly like their other games. Such a dominant performance coming in from Team Secret. They're a little bit of a rough time, you can see there. The player is happy about it, and for Liquid, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board, figure out what went wrong, and come out with a different draft. And I think Team Secret showed something a little bit different as well this time, right? Having Rezo play this Beastmaster. Here with Heed from Team Secret! Woo! Heen, my friend, quite an intense game last time. You guys survived that very aggressive laning stage coming out from Liquid, and it looks like they have just as an aggressive lane this time. However, you guys have a Monkey King. That's uh, not traditionally, you know, somebody that can survive getting run over. Are you confident in that pick? I don't know what you're talking about. And why would Monkey King get ran over? Well, you tell me. What is Monkey King good at? Hey, in my games, he's always throwing in the lane. I, Broodmother just eats his ass like it's nothing. We have a player with more than uh, 2,000 games played on Monkey King, so I'm, I'm pretty confident. Okay, that is confident stuff right there, my friend. So I want to talk a little bit about the attitude of the team here. I mean, this is, you know, where you guys got to last year, a lot of pressure. Uh, are they feeling it, or do you think it's just full confidence? No, I, I think we're feeling much better. We recovered after our loss against Thundra last night. We talked out um, what some of the issues were that led to, like, bad in-game comms. So, I mean, game one went great, so we're hoping to close it out 2-0. You're always so calm on these, Heen, all right? Can we, can we do a real crazy one? Give me an immortal fate. Make some ludicrous claim here about this game, please. Uh, anything at all. Uh, call it out. Babe Ruth it. Um, we're going to get two rampages on two players. Two rampages on two players. All right, Beth, oh, my God. This will be one of the greatest games in TI history as we throw it over to our casters. Thank <laughs> you so much, Slack. Uh, absolutely baited there as usual for the interview. Uh, able to get the coach to say some crazy things. Now, we might not have rampages here. We'll see if it ends up happening or not. But the one thing we definitely are going to have is some pretty nice comms. They started out this game with a little bit of love between the two teams while we were doing that interview, Trent. Um, and Trent. now already into the, the laning stage. Oh, I've seen some of Zayat's comms, you know, to the enemy team when he stands up and screams. So, you know, I, I think maybe we'll get him one of those rampages that he's talking about. Mm. That'd be pretty impressive on Nick's assassin. I mean, <laughs> might not be you, that one gets it. Uh, that'd be pretty crazy. Nisha is going to take some damage there by Matumba Man. But yeah, the uh, the start of this game, I believe I saw Resolution tip Insania and said Analyst Gaming Let's Go yes. uh, XD. Because of course, both of those players were analysts in the Grand Finals uh, last year at TI. And now here they are playing for a spot in the Grand I, Finals. I believe they actually played in the All-Star match last year on Grand Finals Day as well. <laughs> yeah, so that's... this is a significant upgrade. <laughs> it's true. Absolutely. Um, you know, we'll see if it ends up happening again. But of course, uh, these players is incredibly accomplished and uh, have a lot of history together as well, but are going to be facing off now. Insania playing on the Jakiro. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we're talking to the panel and they were saying that they felt that this was a hero that 
gives a lot of that team fight, gives you some pushing potential. It looks like a fast draft from Liquid in some ways. I feel like he just didn't want to play Lich again. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's a very similar idea in concept, but no, it's a little bit tankier, right? Just to, naturally with a, a higher strength, so you can maybe survive something like a, a Boundless Strike Initiation, or at least require a little bit more of those uh, enemy resources before your allies can try and get something else done in the engagement. Definitely going to have some issues versus the Nyx Assassin, though. And obviously, you have a lot of AoE abilities he can punish you on. Dyer's As loses a triple Mango Courier, the Fruit Stand, yeah, chopped that, down. That one hurts. In, in the same motion, you see Boxy get in a nice little pushback there on the puppy, hit behind a tree, and then started beating him up a little bit. Oh, Matsu, though, getting that big damage on Nisha. Has a Fairy Fire still remaining, but certainly getting low here. And I know when we first saw this, like, sort of revitalization of Sniper that was happening in this tournament, I think the first game of it that we saw was Matumba Man uh, playing on the Sniper and just going absolute hand. You could see there as well the rotation in towards mid, Boxy securing the water room. They did do the swap up, so it's Matu playing mid, um, and of course, Mickey up there top on that tiny. Yeah, they had that second pick in the draft this time, so they're able to respond to the lanes uh, much more accurately, as uh, secrets were pretty well set. Uh, a whole lot of flexibility you're going to see at that point once they picked up that Queen of Pain. They were just looking for that girl who's going to be very comfortable in the mid lane and likely going to have a good time as she does snag that range creep tonight. Yeah, so far so good. 14 and 4 versus 12 and 2, and uh, Quap a little bit lower on that CS chart lead. But you can see that already off to a better start, Liquid, than they had in that game number one. Uh, as Mickey is going to get that wave pulled back through and to a little bit of better contention. For it's a 100% win rate. I mean, they win a lot of games, so it's not that surprising. But seven games. Ooh, Zayak taking a lot of damage there from Mickey. Can't get in for a kill, but still keeping that pressure on. As the Sal, I mean, you have that great HP regen. You're also an Agi hero, so you tend to have a little bit more armor, too. It's, it's a great feeling hero. It's, it's very similar to, like, Ogre, honestly, when you're playing the lane, right? You kind of want to use your HP as a tool when you're bullying these heroes. You want to absorb a lot of spells as the Nyx Assassin and, and let them think that they can kill you like they are up top. Let yeah. them think, though, they'll <laughs> actually die. Well, that's going to be it. Mickey moves on in and cleans up the power of the dual breath there combined with just a little avalanche toss combo from Mickey. Instructions were unclear. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and again, I think that's partly that, uh, you know, early movement over getting some mangoes on him. It's uh, a nice little injection of the mana regen. Yeah. Oh, the crowd, they, they like that one. They want to see Liquid get a couple more. They want a game three here. SLS getting some more punches out. Zai trying to chase him down. Doesn't have that boundless strike, but you can see after that first blood, hungry for a bit more on Liquid. Yeah, of course, we saw this matchup uh, just yesterday, I believe, in terms of uh, you got to be watching out for that Jingu Mastery, all stacked up, one Boundless on Neutrals, on the Creep Wave, on the Spiders, anything there to get your HP back up. And he missed there on the Zai, able to dodge away from that one, that high movement speed for the Brood. And now Larny looking for more punches. The tag team, a couple more hits. Chrysalis in trouble. They can't quite get in range, but they do bring him down. Zai already putting to work on him, although up top, Insania, he's in some trouble. Throws out the dual breath and Rezo Zai is able to pair together to get that kill on the Jakiro. Yeah, but getting the kills on the Monkey King in lane, that's gonna feel great for a Brood lane. Not necessarily something you expect to go super well. Uh, one second, he gets away. That blink coming right off cooldown there as Boxy gets a little bit of separation, won't get hit by any daggers. Matumba Man also very low. Will have some regen coming out to himself, but not a ton actually. It's going to have to just tango up and maybe even head back home. Yeah, that wave. I mean, good timing there from Boxy. They don't get the kill, but the wave's coming out of the tower, so he doesn't tank too much. And once again, he's going to get himself uh, some earlier uh, HP, or uh, rather XP here, because uh, they have to run on home on the, uh, the sniper. You can see the Ring of Health already done for Rezo means the chance for a kill on him, pretty low percentage. Um, of course, can go on to Zayas if the mood strikes at the moment comes around. Uh, they need some other type of rotation to make it work. Otherwise, to kill this Rezo, Primal Beast. Mickey on yeah, the position one tiny, though. Uh, still, just because he's playing up here, though, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to change his like, normal game plan all that much. He throws some harass on the Rezo. Obviously, there's still some pressure on him to be making those rotations across the map. Uh, it sort of depends on the game that you get out of your brood, right? Because we've seen this several times from Liquid where they pick up this brood very early. They're willing to get counterpicked. Like, they know that certain picks are be coming. They have to protect it a lot during the drafting phase, just like that Enigma. But it's all the space and the time that the hero is going to buy for you. It's a, it's a nice yeah. way there for puppies. I mean, that's one of those that could suddenly be the death of Nisha if they're not careful. But Resolution stuck around Radiant's down in time. the top lane. The tree toss. Mickey cleaned him up. Mid lane as well. 
Foxy, he tested for a ward when they did that initial gank. Oh, there we go. Ooh, jumps in Sonic Wave, but Tumbleman turns, looks to fight. A couple more punches. Nisha also goes down. They get one kill first. Now Zayat's going to be chased through the river, but with no more mana, they can't clean up that Nyx Assassin. This is all stemming just from ward battles, right? Because, yeah. like, Foxy was, like, running on the high ground, checking the tower when they were both dead, when both the mids weren't there. No, Saw there was no ward, but when Queen came back, she instantly warded, they spotted it, they go for the sentry, that gets them on the high ground on the radiant side, and everyone just collapses mid for the fight. But, you know, as much as that kill is huge for that, that quap, definitely need it. Um, now about even on the network with that sniper, uh, and, of course, uh, going much further ahead in terms of the XP. Look at what Mons is up to, though. Sneaky little sniper here. An interesting rotation. Shrapnel ready. Will he be able to find him, though? As Chrysalis hiding off in those trees, it's not an easy kill to get. It's just waiting down, seeing if there's going to be any TP rotations as Zion Puppy chasing Insania. Up the Radiant's river bottom and tower is under get attack. out of there, it looks like. Yeah, he's gonna survive. Foxy's getting XP mid, and uh, they're just gonna take this early tower. So, you, I mean, you counterpick this, right? You have this Monkey King, and he's not really pressuring the Brood. Look at this, she's ahead in terms of the net worth. Zai's feeling great, hanging to the small Radiant camp. They're hitting this tower. And so they're gonna try and counter pressure on top. Mickey is not aware this is coming. Oh, standing still for a moment. Avalanche to interrupt before the ring gets out. Any TP rotations, not Cena. Okay, tries to get away, but they bring four, drop the ring, drop everything. This car tiny is going to be brought down in the end. That was a lot of heroes there for that one. That was a lot of spells cast for one kill, but you'll take it. It's going to give you that wraparound on the tower now. Brezla getting in there, grabbing that wave, and so Masu is going to knock down that bottom tower. He's going to open up this whole jungle space here for Zai, who's already cramming his way through the neutrals. And Secret Hoping did the same thing up top as Boxy. Also looking to set something up top here. And it's interesting too, you know, you think about the difference in terms of the style all these Wraith fans picked up from a Tumble Man is Chrysalis going to be chased a little bit through the trees. Boxy spots him there. It's to go forward for that kill though. Dyer and Resolution picks up his face boots. And how much they can do, they will see Reza now comes back with the range creep. Three attack. heroes here, they want to go for this, but it's a tough get with the Onslaught. And Ice Path just a little bit away. Resolution didn't get clipped by it. So they managed to get away with him after those heroes rotate up. Boxy does a little juke to the side. Zayat, a little bit quick on the trigger Radiant's finger. Middle tower is well, not only does attack. he get away, he also gets back in time to stack a camp of Chrysalis. So, very happy Monkey King right now. Good, absolutely. So, three to four. And as this game develops, you're seeing Zai just take over this side of the map. Very hard for any of the supports or other heroes to come on into this radiant jungle. And you can see at the same time, Liquid, they're farming up their own jungle. This net worth lead, if things don't change soon for Secret, is going to start to pretty quickly expand. Yeah, that is the one thing they need right now is to give that space to Chrysalis, right? He's the lowest of the core, so like they're getting these stacks for him. They're giving him this safer spot up top, but you know, Liquid are not letting up the pressure, keeping a lot of heroes up here and allowing the Broodmother to control that bottom half map by herself. He's trying to not get caught right now. That's a low-level Nyx, though. As the Courier heads right on in. Zai will still survive through that gank. Resolution in the area, but they can't connect, can't find him. And look what they're doing now in the Radiant Triangle. They, oh. they spot that big stack that was sitting here. That's huge. Yeah, that was all built up. This was supposed to be how Chrysalis gets back into the game, and it's just not going to happen. Rezo even kind of left that there for him too, right? Like, he could, like, trample that down, but... I mean, he doesn't really have the, the build necessarily to go for that at the moment anyway, I suppose, on Chrysalis, right? So perhaps it would have been better if someone else just grabbed it. Liquid very happy to see a triple stack, though. Claim that one. And the status quo continues, which again, for it, we need to make something happen to disrupt this at some point. But with the spike carapace onto the shrapnel, maybe shades of things to come later on in this game. But Matumba Man was able to just push out that creep wave. And Liquid's still having all three of those cores on top of the network, pretty much. So, next couple of minutes here, they are rotating top. Rezo just charged all of the spiders. <laughs> he just munched the ball up right now. Very late pick in the draft, again, for the Primal Beast, right? Uh, especially versus that Brood, but there's just, there's so many heroes now that uh, can deal with this, uh, this giant, like, well of spiders, right? You know, they're banning out these Pangos, these, uh, these Punkas, they still grab a, a Monk King and a Primal Beast, so Zai just kind of has to live with the fact that your spiders aren't going to last that long. 
Just keeps spamming them out for the vision right now. Letting him know if there's Radiant's anyone dangerous tower. in the area. And, um, punching Poppy a little bit here. Now you can see as uh, Amar was talking about though, having that uh, that first spell versus the spiders. Kills the little ones right there. A bit of gold and flux for position five never hurts. Very good. Keeping the pressure off of him from getting just completely bullied too. As Zai still living in this lane perfectly fine. Trying to get in towards his hood. Uh, and some more of those team fight items later on. Well, Secret content to just take half of this jungle. Trying to get into that Witchblade for Queen of Pain. And again, uh, the sort of question I have is at what point does this break down? Is it just around ulti timings? Yeah, that is the real question, right? Like, who wants to make the first move? Bottling the regen. Boxy getting chased. A couple more punches. They have denied available, but can't get it. Instead, it's going to be Boxy going down in exchange for Zayat. So. Just a couple of heroes traded off Zai. Caught for a moment with the pulverize, but he does manage to escape from there. Arcane Curse onto the Brood, backs away. Yeah, Crystal's also rotating over for this. I mean, not that it's that much of a punish on a Monkey King, huh? He's like already back up top after TPing there, so... Uh, Crystal's well aware of how to abuse this hero, and... Uh, unlike the fact that... Oh, jumped in! That blink was mighty aggressive, sir! <laughs> Nisha smelled some blood in the water. It was his own, though. Brought down quick. Uh, that looked like your silencer was maybe level 6 or something there. You know, you're home for a save. Uh, not the case quite yet. 13 minutes and he just gets it now on Poppy. Dyer's top tower is oh. under That's another thing to always watch for these uh, position 5 silencers, right? Is like trying to get that early buyback. Yeah. Because like you never know, right? Radiance Die first in the fight, obviously, if you just get the buyback and the ult, he can turn everything Dyer's when they're trying to target you. Is under attack. Oh, how much can they get out of this now? Mickey, he shows targeting. up. Link, Tumblr's toy, went for a spell, puppy down low, gonna get Walrus punched to death. The buyback there though, and the global. Need to get out with the rest of them. They will bring down one, Mickey to fall, in, but Tumblr also goes down. Nisha was right on top of him, trying to finish him off a couple more hits, and it is gonna be enough. But still, a big win after dive. After dive, it goes out. See, this, this is why you play five silencer. Yeah. Because they dive and they kill you, and it's okay. It's all right, guys. I'll just buy that global. It's fine. Ends up net positive for him as well, as you can see on the recap. Earned himself a solid 79 gold for throwing away his life. What a gamer. Big plays. And you can see there, once everybody from Secret shows up, they immediately are able to find the Tumble Man on that back line with Nisha. Cleans him up. Yeah, no way to escape as well, right? Rezo just gets the claws on you, and you're just dead. Mid lane as well, back in the game, though. Uh, Puppy, well, you know, th there's one downside to that whole, you know, buyback thing. It's a dying again right after. Not so great. Uh, he's gone for a while. Boxy will separate from Chrysalis there. Liquid still looking good on all of their cores, but has been a pretty big setback after losing that fight there mid. Big injection of the, the gold, but Mickey. With his blink dagger done, we'll see if he wants to keep making moves around the map, queuing up that Aghanim Scepter next. Go to top the gap isn't that large in terms of the cores, right? There's a pretty substantial gap between Radiant's all the cores and the supports in this game, attack. which is something that particularly Liquid usually doesn't really have, right? Like, they tend to have the supports pretty close to their three, but... Toss back, Macro Pyre, Zayat's on Mickey, Rezo dropping low, is gonna die. Nisha hanging out in that Macro Pyre too. Good boundless strike, the chase down, Mickey trying to survive, but he's gonna die, but Tumbleman can't get there in time to help out for this fight. If it continues a little bit longer, they might be able to make something happen, though. Turns now onto the Monkey King, Puppy goes down, dead for 25, Chrysalis still trying to escape. Yeah, nice path. Zai chasing, Boxy right on top, the slow down, the Monkey King, this would be such a huge kill if they could bring down Chrysalis, and they will. Liquid, this dive bears fruit. Yeah, Chris is just feeling that pressure, you know, he was the lowest on the course for a while, he's trying to catch up, and the way he's been trying to catch him in these fights is the TPing in every time. It's like a secondary ultimate on this hero because he can farm anywhere on the map, he TPs in, he wants to get that fight with a boundless strike, but the punish is there from Liquid, they're ready for that attempt. Foxy runs down to Zayats, can they find more? Mickey, he's got his blink dagger, Nisha right up on the high ground, jumps in, Ava interrupted the toss, but the global! Boxy caught a couple more punches, but they're not quite going to get there in time. Matsu, a couple more hits. He gets away. Resolution being chased by Mickey, so a trade so far. Support for support. Another round of Avalanche, but they can't get him. Yeah, there's no toss target. out of there. Able to crawl away there in that Primal Beast, but Liquid's starting to take a bit of a lead here as they get some map control. They're going to grab that next rune, and it just puts Matsu faster back to farming. That's right. God, all these early stats, too, with the Mask of Madness done, 
He does a ton of damage if left alone in these battles. And he's just so involved too, right? Like he's got so many frontliners in these drafts. Even, like everyone can just be ahead of him. They, they play the Vanguard. They have his full bodies uh, up ahead, just like last game. And as Seeker, we're playing it. And there's a, a good reason why this hero has been so popular. Well, we'll see where they decide to go next on Secret. As this track four is still looking pretty good. And Liquid, likewise, as you mentioned, the same for Secret. Sai pressuring down bottom. Rezo, Onslaught, Chase. He wants to find one, and Sandy is there with the dual breath. Ice path, a little bit off the mark. And eventually walks into a puppy he gets turned onto now. And with Matu there, has to immediately run away. They also snowballed Nisha mid here. Boxy went in for this. Boxy in very far. Can't get a deny, so secret. Yeah. Clean up that tusk. I think it was Zayat being in proximity that Mickey didn't want to jump in and go for a play. I think he was worried about a, a carapace right there. So Boxy kind of got uh, shoved off there. Well, again. Head up top. A liquid head down bottom. See if they can get any extra pressure uh, onto these towers after mid has already been claimed. Onslaught in. Zai runs into him after killing those spiders. But with Matumba Man nearby, it's too dangerous to really chase that. Yeah, Liquid have seen that there are several heroes up top. They spot the Queen of Pain on the ward, so they're all starting to rotate their way down to Zai. It's been pressuring this in, trying to get towards this tower. They also have a, a ward helping to cover their current positioning near the stairs. McKay's gonna go stand Radiant's over there, keep an eye on any potential attack. smokes that could come through and just grab any heroes that come up the staircase. So there's a pretty safe tower pressure right now, and they don't really have an alternative here for Team Secret. Like, it's not like they're able to like, pressure top right now. Like, Chris is trying to go to the wave right now, but they Radiant take this tower down extremely fast with Broodmother and Sniper. Dyer's right, and you think about tower. last game Sunday and what we saw, that Beastmaster Radiant's draft, the ability to not just take the objectives of the towers, but also head on into the Roche pit. You can't really do that with the secret lineup. Yeah. Much more difficult. Handy. They've also struggled a lot more this game to get their vision down, and that's something that Liquid have in space. So they see all of this. They find one, Mickey just Radiant's a little bit late on it. Puppy not caught by the shard. Zai wants to chase. They're going into danger zone, though. Avalanche, toss, punch, dead. No buyback this time around. Mickey, he's going to get chased. The toss, the impale, needs to lay this a little bit longer to get the stun onto the Queen of Pain, but Mickey, he's gone. Nisha tries to survive. No, it's killed off. Zai right on top with those spawn. Spiderlings and Chrysalis. Yeah, careful. Ooh, Monkey King has to be careful. So final tally ends up being a two for one. I have one for you. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> this guy's crazy. You know, he gets caught suddenly. I mean, he does have the BKB, I guess. I mean, it all started, this could have been so different too, right? Because they're coming into this area having all this vision from Team Liquid. There was an opportunity to maybe grab Nisha right off the start as he was close to a board, but they didn't quite get it. They didn't get to uh, really abuse the invis that's on Nikkei either. And uh, grabbing Puppy at the start. Sure, there's no buyback, but uh, at least they were able to get Nisha uh, right after there too. But didn't really feel like the like the biggest win that maybe I was expecting for Liquid, considering how much setup and prep I feel like they had for the moment. Yeah, when those don't pay off, it can be pretty rough. Crystal is feeling comfortable playing around this ward, but Liquid's gonna run right up to a high ground. They find one, Puppy dead. Buyback again, so they can't go for the global. They drop down the ice pad, connects onto two. Stun there, Nisha, Walrus punch, dropping low, but gets away. Tiny has already died in exchange for the silencer. It's not enough from Liquid. So they weren't able to claim any other kills there. Zayas gets hit by the assassinate and a TP in from Tusk. Boxy trying to chase this guy, but can't quite find him. So it's a long time, but he's been dead again though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And in the meantime, they're going on in towards that Roche pit, it looks like. So Boxy will head over, use the tag team to help them claim this one. As Liquid wanting to get an objective after they push Secret away from that high ground. They're doing a great job of targeting Puppy. Uh, instantly, the fight, you have to give them a lot of credit for that, but it is very costly, said last night, right? Like, and they're losing core for it every time. Uh, but they are getting the map control, and now they're getting that victory on top of that by going in here for the Roche. Grab that Aegis. And they're gonna put that Rayleigh on too. So just in case they get to that back line, obviously they have the Queen of Pain, they have this Monkey King with the BKB. There is a concern that he's gonna get back there uh, in an unstoppable way. So protecting Matu for a potential second life in these fights. Again, with that Roche being given up, it did also give a lot of time for Secret to keep their farm going. And you're getting closer to this BKB on Nisha. 
these item timings can be very strong from Secret. Talked about the potential for late game scaling that you get out of this Monkey King. There's a list with over 2,000 games played on the hero. He only knows his limits. But we'll have to watch and see after the tier two tower's already been taken. There's really not much for Liquid to get here on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, just grabbing that farm, trying to uh, stack Matu up just a little bit higher. Obviously, uh, we heard our panelists there, ATF and, uh, and Taga, talking about this idea of like the semi cores, right? Like the Monkey King, the Queen of Pain, and the Primal Beast, they're all very capable of fighting at this point in the game. Uh, but they're also fairly capable in terms of like, their scaling and the options they have. Obviously, uh, the Monkey King being one of the best hard carries going late. So, uh, Liquid are much more all in on the sniper. That was not the global he was hoping it was going to be. As he drops immediately, global down with Aegis in hand, this is Liquid's time to party. Feels like he's been working on this uh, this first item forever. Like, had the Ghost Epic queued up uh, almost immediately in this game, but just keeps going down and wants to hold that uh, potential goal for the buyback as well, I'm sure. As movement up, Nisha found. Ice Pat there. Nisha going to die. Mickey finds that target. That ward. That was huge. And doing so much work for them. Obviously, Secret feeling kind of safe in the area because he has his own wards nearby. Relying on these again from Team Secret, sort of cutting off that part of the map, giving that vision uh, across a line there to try and give Nisha the capabilities to go up there and farm. But punished, dying there again on the Queen of Pain, a hero that really struggles when you've died five times in a game. And you can see now that this pressure that's being mounted, Matumba Man is still standing up front and center with not that many heroes behind him. The rest of the team spread out across the map, but they're going to continue this movement and not willing to back out. They want to push this advantage as much as possible right now. Boxy's still not at that blink dagger, but you can see Liquid. It's a small lead, but it might start growing over these next couple minutes unless you could do something different. <laughs> they just ice shattered insane into the high ground there. That's pretty cool. And uh, then forced it back down after there to, to check for some board stuff. So, uh, the positioning's been great for Liquid as well. They are ensuring that uh, this Tosman and Jakiro are in between where they assume the heroes of Team Secret are. And, and Matu, right? Like, you don't tend to think of these uh, these range supports necessarily as playing that, but that's one of the benefits of being a Chikiro. Also, having that four staff, there's the four staff there on Matu. We're stacking up four staffs once again because they just get more and more powerful for everyone that you have. And uh, they've still been working on Boxy's Blink for a very long time, though. That is one uh, unusual part, I guess, in terms of this being a liquid game, right? Like, that Boxy being the lowest on a net worth is not usually something you can see, right? Well, only 2,000 gold separating these two teams, Boxy. Hunting there, can't connect with Resolution, it looks like, as he will onslaught away. Well, in the meantime, Juiceless has finished off the uh, Deso, so more into this, like, just big, huge burst of damage that's coming from this lineup, it looks like. As Zai is going to send those spiders all across the map. Yeah, I will say, you know, as, as a parent here, I think Zai's, you know, children probably not the biggest fans. I feel like a lot of them have been dying, uh, just being tossed asunder across the map. But how about the fact that Zai hasn't died yet? That's been crazy. In a first phase Broodmother versus Queen of Pain, Monkey King, and a Primal Beast. And they were hunting him for so long. Insania, he is going to go down, though. He's died a couple times. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a classic. And also, to some extent, playing his role. They're still grouped around up here. And in fact, Secret. They want to take the fight to them, maybe, now on Team Liquid. BKB done as well as that Wraith Pact. Oh, this could be a huge moment for them. There's 50 oh. seconds left on that Aegis, so there's a bit of a window in terms of, you know, if they want to have a later fight, but this could also just be the, you know, you're down one hero, you're probably going to split up and farm, let's try and grab a kill. Zai spots him immediately, needs to hide away, but there's nowhere to hide. You had to cast a curse some Trent. You talk about how he doesn't have any deaths, immediately goes down. But it was impressive. <laughs> one death's still pretty impressive, I gotta say. That's fair. 25 minutes, and with this Aegis expiring, it's like we're gonna have to look to that next round before they uh, go for another big fight. This next Roche is gonna be huge. Yeah, that's a great feeling for Secret. I mean, you gave up that Aegis, but you're the ones who are getting out on the map. You're grabbing a couple of kills, getting your cores out a little bit further. It was a lot of smoking up together and running around, so it's not gonna have the biggest impact on the overall net worth, but at least it's keeping you uh, a little bit closer in this game than just like sitting back and hiding in the fog, right? If there's anything they need to do right now, it's definitely vision. You look at it on this map right now, they cannot see a damn thing. That seems secret, and this is something that you're trying to get that vision from Zai. It's much more uh, reliant on the Nyx Assassin in this game because they don't have the Beastmaster to try and help prop up that vision game. Uh, likewise for Liquid, needing to uh, get some vision down themselves. It's mainly been by virtue of those spiders that have been tossed out. But, uh, man, Daedalus done next. 
But Tumble Man not concerned about a BKB. He's like, I have one job. If I'm not punching people, we're losing this game. It's a good strat. But of course, a couple of these different heroes that have avenues to get on top of them, whether it's that blink from the Queen of Pain, the Nyx Assassin, uh, Monkey King jumping on him from out of the trees, they have to do a great Dyer's job of protecting this sniper with the rest attack. of the liquid lineup. They were so close to just spawning a uh, invisible Nyx Assassin running through there. Just came through with the ob sentry combo now there. But uh, I saw some circles on the map there from Rezo. Seems to have a great idea of where Liquid are playing. Heading down bottom, Insania's there. They've got the jump right at the start. Find themselves two, but the Spike Carapace. Will it be enough global to interrupt? And they get the control. Onto this Tusk, can they find any more? Zai, he can only look on. Mickey has to run away. Crystal is still right on top. The BKB wearing off soon. Insania's there. He can't stop him. Still BKB runs away. Mickey getting that separation of Chrysalis. He goes down. But Tumba Man needs to survive, needs to do the damage. A couple more hits. He's surviving through it all. Oh the little sniper that could as Rezo tries to clean it up. But Mickey comes in, takes him down. Zion, the last one in the fight, left alive. Liquid. They did it to him. That was a frightening fight of positioning there. He had to force that into the Wukong's command to survive. And then so he has to kill Chrysalis in that moment. Or things can turn so bad for Liquid. But they grab the kills, they turn, they eventually get Matu. But the cost was high as they now go to the high ground with the spiders in tow. And trying to clean up these buildings. I mean, Puppy has to hold off on this one. But Mickey, if he's left alone with these spiders to take down this tower, it's an easy movement into the racks. Obviously, you have the sniper left alive. This building is gone, but Mickey. I mean, he's in a little bit of trouble there. Tries to TP out. Ah, he's going to be fine. But to get a tier 3 tower, a substantial gold lead. Let's so take a look at this replay here. And the way that started, too, the blink in with the carapace there. Excellent play, layered on top of the global. But Mickey held his BKB for after, so he's able to get involved in this fight. Start tossing out some of these big spells. Espresso just, like, runs wild through this. But uh, this was the big part, right? The Wukong, uh, Wukong comes out, and they actually get on Matu with the Primal Beast. That was pretty scary on the left-hand side, but then he's in. They get Chrysalis. Mickey barely surviving as well. And he's able to help uh, turn that fight around there. So they have no choice but to fully focus on Matu. Right, and barely able to come on in the clutch here. I mean, again, we talked about it. No BKB on the Sniper, which means he just has to keep clicking. And he was able to do enough to earn damage before he died uh, to make it work. Now has that Elven Tunic in tow, too. Secret, group together, smoked. They're right on top of all these spiders. And Liquid, they're gonna be aware of this. Still two minutes till Roche is capable of respawning. A relatively long timer on that. Oh, that's the real one, yeah. It's gonna come on back up, so. They'll take the area, but they're not gonna get the reward for a very long time here as Boxy continues to just play around this off century combo, looking for anyone running through that mid lane. Obviously, at this point in the game, this is where uh, the danger tends to be, right? These mid lane waves. So you want to just like nuke it and get out as fast as possible. You don't want to be caught on there. Well, the tier two tower gets hit a couple of times by secret. Immediately, Glyph is out. Wall bottom. A constant thorn in their side. Zai is there. These spiders just rip it asunder, and the pipe is racks. That is just gone. Yeah, the pipe does it. And look at that. Zai gets the kill, keeps the pressure on. They need to deal with this. If Puppy shows for that long, or Nisha, this could be an easy blow up, but Zayat's there to interrupt too. Just more and more TPs just keep coming. They're just like, wait, are they, they going to stay around here? I mean, they're sticking around. Oh, the smoke out. They don't go for it, though. They're not going to stick the whole time. Look at the line drawn instantly, immediately towards that pit. 50 seconds until Roche is back up, though. They're going to get there before it's up. And Secret, will they decide to go out and fight them? This is one of those big macro plays you're going to see a lot in Dota. Maybe if you're new to the game, is that uh, pressuring that bottom tower to pull them away from that Roche Pit. Now Liquid want to take that territory. They want that vision here to have the good fight around the Roche Pit. And now they have the good fight. And Mickey, he finds the good pickoff. Foxy, can they bring him down in time? Resolution so low. And Chrysalis on the back. Where is the tub of it? He's not there to help him yet. He wants a better target to grab. Can they do it? Chase, Nisha finds him, gets the kill. Mickey, he's got to get out of there. BKB wants to run nowhere to go though the bash is out nisha will manage to survive secret they win that fight off of that global such a necessary fight for team secret right now grabbing matu the perfect way to start off this fight it's the one thing that can't happen for team liquid and so much of it was committed on this round these right at the start but he's able to get off the pkb oh the spider <laughs> whole game uh, had to take a second to process what just happened there zai is gonna run away 
I think Liquid might be feeling the same way here. Is obviously they didn't commit for the instant buyback on the sniper. That means he really doesn't want to do it now. And they're going to start moving in towards that pit. Liquid, uh, they have some vision around here. They do end up scanning near their high ground to see if there's any smoke heroes coming by, but. Might be time to go for a little bit of a risky play here. Yeah, gotta be careful. We're watching this replay, but in the game, they have the ice pad down, have good vision. Foxy, he's right away caught and killed. Does have buyback oh, still. Go. Matumba, man, they're so close. And Roche is actually not quite low enough. Zion finds Insania, but they can't get him. Find enough time for the rest of the team to show back up. The buyback is there from the Tusk. Matumba Man tries to show Mickey oh, to them. The damage shot. gets the blink away. He's still solo and doesn't have a way to dodge this, but Nisha survives 70 HP. I don't quite have it. Insania is now dead. Matumba Man, oh, he's in Death Valley. Crystal is right on top. Needs to get away. Foxy there for the punch. Matumba Man, though, he survives through it all. Liquid, they did it. <laughs> they actually did it. All the delays coming in from the supports. They kick them out of the Roach Pit. They force a secondary fight. Nisha forced all the way back home as well. Now they're in there. They're grabbing Roach. They can't get back here in time. Oh, and another age is claimed by this sniper. In the midst of chaos, when everything is at its most crazy, that's when it feels like Liquid somehow managed to make the best happen. Yeah, secret. I mean, that one dream fight where they managed to get Matu right at the start, that's what they needed in that Radiant uh, high ground there. But now he's got himself the uh, concussive grenade there with a the shard, so a little bit Ooh. extra help there. And look at that. Hex done on the Broodmother now. Obviously, Secrets still have incredible team fight, but they need all their heroes to be back up. Chrysalis alive in 15 seconds, while Liquid, they want to try and claim these buildings now. Okay, does have that Aghanim Scepter done as Nisha zoned back for a moment. I mean, it's still so hard to go high ground here. And Chana Quiver picked up as they are another big creep wave coming in through top. I'm curious if Liquid even want to try and push it that hard here if they feel comfortable going into the later stages. Yeah, it's a bit of a, again, a tough one to go high ground here. You really don't want to be stuck inside of Wukong's command. Just get uh, botched down here. Right. At least wait for the BKB, right? <laughs> yes, he has actually fully purchased it now on Matu, so... Certainly much more capable of the engaging and uh, putting himself in slightly riskier positions, like hitting a tower. If your team secret, though, I mean, he's still the number one target, right? Uh, obviously, with the Aegis, there are some questions to that. Maybe you can try and just disable him and try and pick off someone else like Mickey, but he's got that BKB and Poppy. There's so much pressure on him as the silencer. Like, when do you actually pop the silencer, right? Yeah. And nope. try and go for an offensive play. Jumps go. in. They find it. Chrysalis immediately there with the BKB. He gets the four staff away. Gets Matu out, but the pulverize is there. So round one. Oh, actually, Matumba Man he doesn't even go down. They keep him alive. He does finally fall to the Sonic Wave, but they needed that for that second life. He and never with... popped the BKB, though. He did hold it that whole time. Get the concussive grenade, drew it out a little bit further, Radiant's and losing Chrysalis is huge. Attack. That was so enormous for Radiant's Liquid, and taking attack. this Tier 3 tower now, going on to the high ground secret. I don't know if they have enough left in the tank. They're going to smoke Science. up with everybody. It's all right. He needs a big blink play. play. They got to find it. The big stun is there. The big interrupt. Resolution trying to kill him over the snowball. Foxy was there. Zayat now turned upon, but Tumba Man ready to clink them all down. Resolution trying to escape, but there is no escape. Matu is here. Matu is strong. Oh, Nisha tried to hold him back with the halberd. He was just there, stuck clinking away, helpless in his BKB, but it didn't matter. They didn't get enough done during that halberd. And now they've taken the high ground here, moving towards that mid lane. Liquid looking to force a game three here in Singapore. This would be huge for them. Again, such a dominant performance in Secret throughout this tournament in that game number one. Liquid needing to get this to force it. They want to keep their hopes alive. Punches are out. The buyback is there from the Nyx Assassin. Jump in, Nisha, just trying to force them back. And without those BKBs, they needed a second at least to reset. Liquid, still no Aegis in hand and 40 seconds on the BKB for Sniper. All the buildings have been crumbling though. It's just now two melee barracks remaining. Oh, sorry, one melee, one ranged even. Worst case scenario here. Uh, Team Secret. It's not gonna have that constant spider pressure. You know what's interesting though is that in so many of these games, we've seen some of these teams that have fallen behind really early in multiple racks, and it still comes down to needing to win a team fight. <laughs> if Secret can keep winning those, it could be their recipe for success. But right now, at least Liquid in a firm control of this game. Yes, many of the players on this Liquid roster are, uh, you know, oh. no strangers to uh, yeah, Mega I've... Creep games. They know it uh, does not necessarily mean the end. 
We will have to wait if it does indeed happen this time. Another minute or so until the next round of those neutrals are coming up. And I'm looking at it, and I think actually they don't even have all of their neutrals yet uh, on Team Secret. They haven't been able to get out for the Tier 4s or even the Tier 3s. Yeah, when they do get it on the map right now, it's mostly been just to battle. It's yeah. a fight, right? And then, like, the second the fight ends, it feels like they just need to run to whatever the, the prize was after, be it Rose or to a Tier 2 to defend there. There's not a lot of time for them to get on the map and actually farm up these neutrals. Well, BKB's back off cooldown, and for Secret, that means they got to be careful. A lot of spiders ready to run at that range racks while Liquid is down bottom. And TP coming in. Zai sends the spiders with the pipe. Gotta watch the halberd from Nisha. Gotta watch the blink stuns from Zayas. Those are plays they can't even deal with the spiders. The spiders just take out. Oh, barely. Rezo has to charge through the killer spiders. Taking on the top. bottom one, too. He's splitting them up, splitting the defense. It's so hard. How do you even find it? And there it is. The blink in. The BKB. But do they have enough to get out? Chrysalis, a good stun. That's drops down one the one. ring. They have the damage. Can he survive through the right clicks coming from a Tumbleman, though? That sniper. He's just too strong. They take down that melee Rax. Liquid wanting to get Mega Creeps. Oh, the Finish spiders. this one off. And they're going to do it in style. Megas for Liquid. And Secret, it is a huge hill to climb to try and come back into this. I mean, they have some of the heroes, though. They do. Oh, they got the Monkey King. They got themselves a Queen of Pain. A big pure damage swings. Certainly heroes that are, are known for being able to itemize in many different ways as well for certain situations. But it's an 18k lead, you know. Don't get it twisted. Liquid are in a very good spot right now. See now if they will find anybody on these wards here, hoping to catch somebody from Liquid slipping, but everybody out of vision, waiting for those BKBs to come back up again, farming up that next section of the neutrals. And just the power of this draft that Liquid has been able to assemble. Look incredibly good in this game number two. Kind of force it to the game three. And I think right now, too, the other thing that you got to be watching for is like any of these little illusion play moments, they, they have to go for this. They don't know that it's an illusion. Obviously, now they do. But if there's any chance for anybody to be caught off guard, it's, uh, it's a quick jump. Feels like Zai's just has so much pressure on him as well. It's like the best initiation oh. they've got right now. Oh my god, <laughs> they, they got to win. <laughs> the whole teammate. But can they get him? Rezzo, no friends nearby. He too is gonna get brought down. All it takes is a couple of seconds. And with three dead, surely this will be the time for Liquid to close out this game. They're looking to come in here. Chrysalis grabbing the wave in the mid, but of course there's creeps coming through the bottom as well. They've got it all. They have a glyph, but Secret not even in the base to defend it. Is Liquid trying to close this one out here. The buybacks are out. Resolution into this game, but Liquid, will they be concerned? Still a minute until Roche is even capable of respawning. They don't want to deal with that mess. They want to end this now. Global out. BKB disarm. Run away. Boxy there. Snowball through onto both. Nisha gone. Oh, he's armed. Liquid. They're cleaning up. They're taking him down. They're going to game three. Matu's not done yet. Oh, the let's go Liquid cheers have been very loud from this crowd as they've made their way through this lower bracket. And now one more time. They're going to a game three. They're not done yet. Team Secret, now it's their turn to try and figure things out here and see what they want for game three. <laughs> uh, but now it's time for us to actually get in here yeah, as well. So thank here. you very much. <laughs> Eric, can we hear for Tyga Namar? Anyone? Yeah. yeah, a lovely draft panelist. Thank you. So we get ready to go into this one indeed, and we'll see who it is that's going to be able to come away with the victory here. Team Secret versus Team Liquid. Um, my goodness gracious, Trent. Uh, I, I feel like I'm just on the edge of my seat here. I. I kind of have been feeling this the entire day that, I mean, you look at sort of the, the history of these two teams, both of them with former players that are playing with each other. Um, we're going to do a quick little last speech here moment to, to Matu before they went up on stage. So we're going to get into that right now. All right, guys, one last time around the bend. Let's fucking get it. Yeah, truly, I really believe in this lineup from the moment that we all got together. I really love all of you guys. I know that you guys are all smiling and it's cringe. But I really do love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Nothing that happens in this game will change that. I'm always so proud of every single one of you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this journey. Sincerely, I wish you all the best. No matter what happens, let's have fun. Yeah? Let's have yeah. a smile. No matter what happens, we smile at the end of this, yeah? We enjoy yeah. ourselves. Good. 
I love you, brother. <laughs> Truly, it's been a fucking honor one way or another. Wait, why don't we just pick loan to it? Dusky, dusky. And with that, they signed off, got ready to go into this game immediately into the pause but you can see that this is a team both teams that have just put so much investment into each other as teammates and it's been paying off both these teams from the lower bracket from the or rather from the uh, last chance qualifier and now here in the last day of ti um and again for both of them wanting to get some of their highest placements ever Let's see if they can do it coming in here of course we have a couple different game plans going on right now a couple heroes that uh, are, are new to our series right now of course that invoker that everyone loves so much being cheered for that lena early on in the phase but a common trend throughout this tournament has been this, uh, this big ranged damage core and trying to get to that back line trying to find these big ranged damage dealers for liquid they're going to have the lena in that capacity but for team secret they've got sort of a dual uh, action happening here of course they're going to have nisha on this invoker and of course uh, chrysalis on the drow ranger so a lot uh, of heroes and a lot of backline plays that Liquid need to look to do. And it can be very tough. They're going to be extremely reliant on that split <laughs> coming through, trying to find their way there, of course, with the, <laughs> with the Storm Band. Uh, a little bit of an XD there to start. It's, that's always how it goes. They'll sort it out here in just a moment, but you can see uh, not the highest win rate in the world on this Invoker, but a ton of really standout moments. And moments, I think, when you combo that together with the Earthshaker, with the Beastmaster, there's so much potential to just explode these heroes in a moment. And in a way, that's something that Brewmaster can kind of be, you know, an answer to. If you don't kill him in that burst, suddenly that fight's going to go Liquid's way. Yeah, it can just be those tiny little moments. It just really felt like uh, the, the story of every game that Liquid has been in, right? It's these little infest plays. It's that one uh, tiny little jump that you managed to get. How many of their games have just gone the distance? They managed to find their way to a victory where Secret, of course, not, not really being as tested as much, not needing to find those big comeback wins because they tend to just take the lanes and, and choke out the game from there, much like they did in game number one. So will Secret find that success once again? Will they take that early lead, push it, control the whole map, and, and just force out these initiations from Team Liquid? Or will Liquid bathe in that chaos that they've created time and time again here on the main stage? and find themselves a way to the grand final. We'll have to wait and see as the game is already underway and heading also across the map. The other thing that I want to watch for is just like you talked about, that early pushing potential that you get from the Enchantress uh, and that Beastmaster. And Sanya running in through the river. Puppy will find him real quickly. A couple of melee heroes against an inch. Very annoying to deal with, but who's faster on the clicks? Resolution picks up the bounty rune this time. And it looks like that is going to end up being two apiece. Liquid weren't able to snack that extra one. Yeah, no surprises on the lanes here. They split up there. I guess uh, maybe a little bit in terms of Puppy coming up top there and playing with the Beastmaster, but this is just a, a solid combo. Uh, and, you know, uh, Zayats can play a little bit more defensive on the Earthshaker, so pull back the wave, set things up for the Drow. And seeing the fact that it is the Brewmaster at the end with the Tusk, that probably gave them a little bit of comfort in this setup as well knowing that uh, there's not a whole lot they can do to Chrysalis, right? Like, but what's going to stop him from farming? And typically, Earthshaker is someone who can struggle in that position 5 role, unless he's a strong laner like this in the Drow Ranger. But there's not many heroes that can actually provide so much comfort to an Earthshaker like a Drow can. No, absolutely. And that coverage is exactly what she's going to need to just keep hitting away at there uh, on her own. Uh, so the lanes, as they head out across the map, Mickey. Playing on this Lina will try and take it to the Invoker as much as possible, but you can see that uh, one of the issues here is they actually did swap it up. A little Shards connection onto Chrysalis, the Fissure, so a lot of blockage coming out. These melee heroes doing a good chunk of damage uh, onto that draw if they can manage to get on top of her. Yeah, it's important that they try and fight back right now with these earlier parts when they're, uh, they're attempting to punish so level 1 when there's only the Shards there on, on the Tusk and there's like no real threat of just jumping on the Zyats whenever they want. Science uh, coming on in, gets the D ward there. See if Boxy can play his way, and get the other one too. It's gonna be Does really hard to get this camp. Like, yeah, I mean, absolutely. He, he has the sentry, but can't place it down. So Fissure erupt, throws it back oh, on the big swap. Zai's gonna now run over as well. Almost forced the body block, breaking him down. The damage, it's out! Chrysalis gets him with that level two hit. That was just in time. It was like all a dance for the safe lane small camp, right? Like, yeah. they're trying, like changing their positioning, going back and forth like that. Oh, 23 HP, and gonna have to bring a salve out to himself. My goodness. 
Yeah, this lane is tough. This is, this is a really hard one. Radiance middle Getting an early win in a lane with an Earthshaker support is going to be a great feeling because now you've got this Enchantress matching up versus the Undying. You're removing pretty much the whole purpose of this pick. Like, it feels like he really was just picked for the lane. They, do, they don't necessarily have, like, the free Tombstone killers, but they have a lot of great tools versus Tombstones, obviously. Like, they end the, the, drow with, or the draft with a Drow, so plenty of ranged heroes. There's the attack speed aura. It shouldn't be a major concern for them. Really, as long as they have the vision, that Tombstone's going down. You can see the pull there with Green Wave around. Uh, Matsu pulled it back in as Rezo is being zoned away by Insania uh, up here on the top side. Currently going for none of those boars yet. Just wanting to play more around the axes and the punches. As Boxy gets this wave, pulls it back behind. Don't want to have to deal with the Drow anymore. And this is always going to be the answer, right? If you do end up giving up first blood to the Drow, you can do these lane pulls uh, and make the laning stage just that little bit easier for yourself. Although Zaya, feel good though. that's a nice little job there interrupting it. But like giving a free lane to a Drow too, just because you can't contest, is a pretty awful feeling. Oh, that's a nice play from Boxy though. Yeah. Unfortunately, they couldn't get all the melee creeps on him, so he didn't take too much damage from that. Yeah, Drow definitely free game so far. And they're going to need to make some pretty solid rotations later here if they want to find any hope of punishing them eventually. I definitely think there's a chance to go for a kill before level 6. It should be free with the Brewmaster split, uh, assumedly. But there's also a chance to go for something a little bit earlier if they can get that wave away from the tower just because they do have that Tusk initiation. Zombies? <laughs> 18 yeah. HP. Maybe you just needed one more there. Don't have Untouchable yet. So, you know, it's a little scary. Tania tries to get that pull off, but oh, the zombie spawn, which stops the pull. Very annoying for the Undying there. But it's just going to keep on spamming out those decays as much as possible. So at least up top's going well for Matumba Man on the side of Liquid. Bottom, a bit of a different story. Zai trying to make his way out of here. Did switch over form for that drunken brawler. Can he get away from him, though? A couple more punches than Boxy there to play Interrupt. Yeah, it is not a lot of evasion early on. The dusk is Storm Brawler gets him up to just all well, the five percent there, fifteen percent rather. Huge evasion. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. So again, uh, this lane gonna be a tough one, but you can see the Beastmaster also struggling. Five minutes in, they bring on in the big creep. And Puppy, in combination there, is actually going to get some pretty good damage onto Insania. That forces him away. Radiance oh, Matsu has finds a courier killed. just sitting there. Puppy had the Radiance left it hanging out there, so killed. great grab there. Besides, also losing a courier at the same time. All these waves around Matamba Man trying to chase and Radiance stop the creeps from being attack. stolen away from his lane there. And again, because Undying had to back away, they actually don't even manage to come and contest. Nobody wants to lane, is what I'm seeing. Chrysalis is chasing Boxy through the jungle. You know, the, they got the pull into the small camp here now. Chrysalis is coming from that up. All just playing a, a little bit passive at the moment. There's a, a little rotation in the mid lane here, though. But that is a level 6 Invoker. Got a couple tools handy here. Will they be able to find him? Bring him down. A couple punches. Nisha caught. Drops it, the Sun Strike. Mickey takes some damage, but it won't be enough. And that is before level six. Yeah. So no one was coming to help him. I, I thought maybe there might be like a, a Fisher or something in there, but Zayas did not have the option available. No. Or at least he didn't think there could be a, a save for it, which is probably true when it comes to the Fisher plays, right? Uh, Fisher to try and save from an Ice Shard is kind of unlikely. Yeah. You can't get into position there to uh, steal away the Bounty Rune either, so. These boxy rotations bearing a little bit of fruit. And Zai moves over, okay. Can chase him down here. Zayat's in some trouble. Throws the Enchant Totem out. A couple more punches. Boxy Lane gets well. on the board as Resolution. Chase underneath the tower. Matumba Man on top of him with Insania. They bring down Rezo to boot. Surprising, couple kills across the map there. I feel like Insania's struggling in this lane. Sun Strike's not there, but the punches coming from Puppy. And the uh, Wolf managed to clean up. So six and a half minutes and already the lane's starting to break down a little bit more as the battles ensue. Yeah, the constant has been Matsu though, just constantly on the wave, never really being forced off here. 41 and 11 as he leads the board in terms of the CS and well ahead net worth now as well. Seeing if Nisha can get up to that 
Hand of Midas as quickly as possible. He is going for this Exhort build, so he's going to rely upon these Sunstrike kills. Missing a couple of them there, you know, not the biggest deal in the world. Those are things that would really just accelerate his farm up, but mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see. When the Roar comes out, though, as well as the Helm of the Domineer, there's going to be a lot of damage coming from Rezo in combination with Puppy. They can just bring a secondary creep. They can really get some big chain stuns going if they want, and it should be free picks at that point. And then on the other side, uh, for Team Liquid, you're looking for the level six on Sai, right? That, that first split, Chrysalis, I'm sure, is going to be well aware that there's a, a big uh, opportunity for them to go for a kill. We might see a little bit of babysitting from Sai in that situation. But the other TPs to save, like Puppy doesn't have a whole lot of tools that he can really do much uh, when the Brulings come out. So it's going to be based off of the intuition of Chrysalis to survive. A Dumba Man on to Rezo. TP's coming in, though. Needs to be careful and fast. And the runaway, they're going to lose Boxy there as Chrysalis heads on out of lane, but they do get away on Matumba Man. Force that rotation though, but again, that's Chrysalis, right? He saw an opportunity to get out of that lane because he knows what's coming, right? Yes. So better than just waiting for it and having to like run to the jungle, you're a drow, that's not really ideal. You'd much rather take this swap, come up top, avoid the brew split and start farming here and said, keep that net worth moving upwards. And so you have this uh, dual core of the invoker, the drow staying strong. All right. Kind of weird for Rezo, though, because he's playing a Beastmaster. So now like, he's still farming towards his helm. Now there's like a Drow in his lane, you know? Yeah, that part does feel a little bit different. Um, and the other thing about this is we're seeing the, the Lina just head on back and farm up the jungle, too. I was wondering if after getting that ulti online, if she was going to start rotating around, getting some kills. But Mickey opting to just go into the jungle and farm, and gets that perfect neutral item for the Lina. Very string it. It is cool that Rezo has the three points in the axes, though. So he's just like farming up stacks right now while Crystalis takes his lane. He's not going to fall behind too much. Now they could even go for a, a smoke plague with the roar if they want to as well. Again, with Puppy's creeps. And chain quite a few. Uh, I can pretty much kill anyone, actually. Maybe not Matsu, but with the help of a Sunstrike, he's still gonna be pretty tanky and hard to grab. But anyone else is gonna be a pretty free grab. Right. And of course, those infest plays are something you're gonna have to watch for uh, later on. So many units that can get turned into an escape route for that life stealer. I almost feel like Sai is like kind of annoyed down here. He's just like, I, I want to kill someone. Can I please, like, someone show? You know, <laughs> all his other heroes he's been playing, he's able to like push this tower. He's given this space. It feels like he can immediately start pressuring somewhere else on the map. But instead, he only really has the, the creeps to deal with at the moment. Oh, right. And is going to be able to farm pretty well on that brew. Something that you like to see. If you can get Radiant's into a couple of those later rounds, we've seen some of them go for the Wraith Packs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Aghanim Scepter, uh, yeah. not as good as it used to be, but still very strong. Oh, TVs. debatable. Thank you, Ben. Xenia. Well, he's dead. Can they find anything after, though? Resolution in some trouble as Boxy moves in. So they use the Roar to kill off the Undying, but they get punished pretty heavily on the other side of that. Yeah, hoping to catch a couple of their core heroes there, obviously. That's why Zai's coming up here to try and get the split off, but not going to find it. And I'll tell you who <laughs> What? I mean, he would have he would have taken the Invis rune. You know? All right. Yeah. Let's him know how he feels about that's it. That's right. I like how he tips him too. That's yeah, awesome. That's right. You think I wouldn't? Dude, well, you see something new every time at this TI. Oh, and behind the split. Uh, they do not have a Laguna Blade. I don't know how it happened, but it's not there. It turns out they don't need it. Nisha goes down. Oh my goodness. Dude, that was sick. Yeah. This is all just cover, though, because Zayat's got a free lane bottom for a couple waves. All right, that's the secret to the Earthshaker players. You got to feed some of your teammates a little bit, right? Got to get that early blink dagger. Very important that you find the time for this hero. Okay, what is Insane you doing? How did he just kill a courier down there? He's hanging out, Who man. Who is this man? And moving in from behind. Zayat's there. They don't have Bruce Blood anymore, but the Echo! Oh, but the Snowball safe. Can they get him out after? Mickey's got to run, but Puppy's there for the slow. LSA connects on a two. Sunstrike out. It is going to be enough with the hits from Chrysalis. Oh, Insania. He did not know whether he should come in here. He thought about backing up, and he's like, oh, I'll throw a tombstone. Maybe we'll do something. But I think in the end, he knew that was going to be a tombstone feed. So unfortunately, he kind of just adds on to the bounty. And you can see that after, the, again, a bit of a slow start to this one, it turns into a bloodbath and some good cinder brew damage there out onto Nisha, but they want to try and get some damage oh, onto I this mean, tower. The split is down, you know, it's like chum in the water. They know that Zai doesn't have a whole lot he can do in this situation. They smell blood and they go right for that tower. TPs could come in soon. They have to be careful about this one. Rally the dead. But no, that is the power of this edge. You get that troll creep, you run on in, you take the tower. Oh, how about that though? An and smoke as well from Zayats and Puppy. They're gonna start moving up towards their, their Beastmaster because Rezo, of course, has the roar up and ready, has the helm creep. So if anyone tries to contest this tower, again, no split, they're not too worried about it. And this uh, the replay on the, the Laguna. <laughs> wow, a man. 
Dude, the eyebrow raise is too good. Oh, I love yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> Was not expected. That's that the one. most emotion I've ever uh, seen from Nisha. You know, you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, silent killer usually. Well, the uh, salvo of damage that we had towards mid. It looks like Liquid want to make the move again. After losing their mid tier one tower, they will head on in and claim one of their own. Radiance Middle With Tower has Vlad's fallen. already done on that brew. A couple of smokes purchased. Watch for those blink timings. I like that play from Liquid too, sort of like posturing mid with a lot of units, a lot of heroes coming in there and just knowing they hit the split coming up in just a second as it's now available now, so uh, Secret not feeling like they can really contest that as they're just going to keep Chrysalis farming up the jungle and now, you know, Zayat, he's just going to try and like find that farm somewhere, be it Shard, be it Blink, it looks like he's probably not as confident getting the Blink this game, feels like he just wants that uh, early Shard instead. Right. But it's just, it's like so strong for stalling with these fights, of course, to try and provide all that space that you can for an Invoker and a Drow. But if you're not getting the blink first, like, does this even feel like that worth it, you know, as a hero? I feel yeah. like that, that's where you really get the value to the four shaker. I know, it can be an issue. Something to be a bit concerned about is Chrysalis is farming up those ancients, and you can't get that initiation off. You start to feel much less uh, valuable in these fights. Uh, but of course, like you talked about, that extra damage that you get Die. from those Sunstrike oh, laters uh, could help to mitigate that a little bit. As we have this stall out period, and you gotta imagine that. Nisha's going to be happy about this. Building towards, uh, you know, his next item is actually going for a force staff after that Hannah Midas. So more tools to get that separation away from particularly the Life Stealer. Yeah, it's like the counter to Team Liquid, right? They just keep picking Tusk and Life Stealer. Right? So just every game, it feels like just more and more force staffs. I'm sure Poppy's feeling the same way. Indeed, he is. Stack those up. It's great to have it on the Drow, too, so. Likely to be Radiant's another game where it's going to be something they're going to have to contend attack. with on Liquid. Well, in the jungle, they find each other looking for a high five. Zayat, is he feeling friendly today? You got to be careful if he's a chant totally high fives you. Oh, yeah. It hurts. Oh, I got it. Yeah. No high five. Smoke up from Zai and Boxy. They're hunting to try and find the Beastmaster. Like, can I even kill this right now? Back oh, behind. Oh, I can't get it. Oh, but look, the chase, it's there. Rezo thinks it's all good and well, but the chase, they catch him. Stone, couple more punches, the creep buying some extra time. The, well, Chiatone doesn't do anything with that Echo to get away from him. Tombstone down, Chrysalis is there though, and that's gonna be enough to kill off Boxy. Insania has to run, but Mickey, he's got a DD, moves in, finds science, gets that kill. Now Puppy trying to get out of there. They have the lift up on Anisha, drops the meatball, but it's not enough. Nisha in trouble, couple more hits, he dies. Zai on a killing spree as they look for Puppy, but Chrysalis wants to move forward. Insania trying to take up a bunch of those hits as he can, and Mickey gets the double kill. That's four already dead. Zai on top of Chrysalis, hits the stun. Mickey there. Mickey wants the kill. They're diving behind the tower. Resolution, he's back in. Have they gone too far? Liquid in, very deep. Another TP in. Zai is back alive. Mickey hopes to escape, but there will possibly be an escape. No. Zaya cleans up. Oh, he bought us BKB though. And he was able to buy out. And to think that all starts from just two heroes smoked in. They are getting so much into these early Bruce splits, which is really the key to them getting this victory. Now, you can definitely see these moments where they bait out the Bruce split and you're able to get away, but the shards are really helping those situations. They forced that fight on top of Rezo. And Zayat even felt committed, of course, to, to hop in there with the Echo, but it wasn't enough to turn things. Does have a shard as well, though, so he can continue to like try and solve these fights, try and force uh, some good sun strikes as well there from Nisha. But great plays from Liquid. And now they have two humongous item powers when they come in the uh, next fight. They're going to have that BKB on Mickey's Lena, as well as that Wraith pack now on Zai. But much like the Tombstone, again, it is an issue where they do have good tools versus it on the side of Team Secret. It won't necessarily be that big, like, dominating Wraith back this game. Yeah, and you can see here just the amount that he's getting done on this brew. Zai has had a tournament that's sort of been a lot of great moments, but also a couple where he's had to be sacrificed as we get into another battle. And Nisha found Lifestealer right on top. Didn't stand a chance. The way they're grooving and playing with this splitless brew is so good, right? They just now take that fight. He doesn't does have the brew split back for another 15 seconds. They immediately move into the roast pit with the Dessa, with the Vlads, all these items stacking up together, and the tombstone drop instantly. 
They're into the pit now. Puffy is down bottom, just trying to push these waves out. I don't know if they can come and contest this. Right, they had the vision. They saw it all go down from the side of Team Secret. But with no and blink seven. dagger, no nothing from Zayats, it's too hard to walk into this pit. They got Hawk in a few seconds here, but no, they, there's no way they get there in time. They tried, but they will not succeed. And Zai now there to slow him down. The Enchant to back away. Still have to be careful about running up high ground into no vision. And Insania, he's going to get punished for the hubris. All the soul rips have been pretty incredible from him so far. Max and Edo first getting lots of saves in these fights. And he'll just go down there. As he helps his allies escape. So what do they escape with? They get themselves an Aegis onto their Lina. They still have the split available. So when he's back up on Insania, they can start to move their way onto that Radiant side of the map. And with that death onto Nisha, of course, and he's 0-4-0 on this Invoker. He's got Midas and Force Staff. It's not exactly the, the dream game for the hero, but his levels are starting to add up. Philly picked up now. You know, you end up in these situations that I was sort of talking about. The mental stability that it feels like this team's been able to keep up there. Um, they're gonna have to make another move here from Secret in a little while. See what they can find across the map. They have that shard ready on the Earthshaker. Uh, but it does still just feel like they need more time. Oh, uh, a common trend of Secret Throats, uh, the last chance qualifier, and TI has always been like Zayat and Rezo dominating their lane and pushing forward from there. Very combat heavy, it felt like it's Dawnbreakers, right? Like Marcy, just like fighting uh, everyone all the time. Oh, Echo, it's not enough. That's not quite. Oh my goodness, and stick charges. Yeah, they, they don't have that though. They're not like a snowballing off lane duo in this game. In game one, it worked really well because they had this like double vision tactic where they were going with the Beastmaster and the Nick Assassin. They find him, Nisha in the woods. Zai pops the ultimate, he, he wants, wants this bad. one. He wants it real bad. Lift up there, the rest of the team coming in. Back behind the tower, Mickey going into this fight with half HP, they time it perfect. Nisha gets brought down. Liquid, they are feeling themselves here. Uh, again, we talk so much about Puppy and the consistency that he's had. Zai is another one of those players. He's been to so many different TIs, but if they win this game, this will be his highest placement ever. Well, but still have to grab it despite Zai. It's running away with the creep wave. I was, I was kind of wondering, like, where's the Fisher say? He's just running. He's got wave after wave. And uh, Boxy, not even gonna bother trying to chase him or cut him off. They're just moving elsewhere on the map. They want a bigger prize for themselves. 19 and a half minutes and a 4,000 gold lead. These little mid-game leads can be so dicey though. We've seen yeah. some that have fallen apart very quickly and is this gonna be one of them? Gotta be careful. Lifestealer inside the open wounds and Matamba Man gonna run away. Resolution just not quite close enough to connect with any roar or anything else. Bit of a bold one there, as there was quite a bit of vision in the area from Team Secret. And oh, Zai, so of course, uh, the long run with the creeps will come to an end here. Eventually being caught inside that dire jungle, so. Game one, similar situation, Beastmaster, right? Uh, they're able to take so much of the map over from the side of Team Secret because of the way he pushed through that top lane, established good vision up top, and they just played around that area. This game, Chrysalis take the top lane instead. Rezo's not able to really like establish that big point, and Liquid just catching all these great fights with the Brewmaster has been so important for them. And Secret, they're, they're really lacking that vision. They don't really know. Uh, until Liquid cross the river, they're not really sure what they're up to. And they're, they're not able to go for these, you know, cheeky little plays the Sun Strikes to try and uh, you know, get Liquid off balance. Instead, it's Liquid who are just pushing through and always staying very grouped together. The Tumba Man showing, and Zai also showed for just a moment. This smoke, it's gonna be broken immediately. Zai, it's, he's in an awkward spot now, and Sany is there to break it. Tries to find one, Rage immediate turn for the kill. So they will get the Undying. Yeah, Liquid don't want this fight. Secret are throwing all the resources at it, at it once again. Game two, Chrysalis was really trying to get involved in as many fights as possible. Just trying to get his team to a, a solid position. He's doing that once again. He's TP's up here, trying to find these engagements when he can, then moving back to farm when it looks like the fight's not going to happen. Liquid there, of course, uh, can be a little bit pickier with their fights. But with another minute left on the Aegis, and not getting a, you know, another tier two could be kind of nice if they wanted to. So now they just seem comfortable going to that uh, next round of items, the BKB, uh, potentially on Matu. That blink done on Boxy. They're getting into the Agnum Scepter next for Zai. Yeah, I hope so. I hope he goes out over the blink. Blink's obviously really cool, but you know. The eggs. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice LSA grab. connection for Staff, keeping his buddy alive. This is why Nisha invests in this. And with that lack of connection on the kill, Zai actually spots out these wards that were just placed. So, this is going to come on in and take those away. 
D ward going on, so all vision gone. So the main benefit of the Agnims, at least to me, would be Zai having the, the wind panda all the time, right? Like the wind ruling, constantly able to go for the disc all to kill out these summons. Because it's always been like a counterpoint that the brewmaster has, but it's only during the ulti. Whereas now, when you have this Agnims, you can actually do it constantly. Walks up the hill. Aegis about to expire. This fight could get a little bit dicey here if they're not careful. You Silence right out, in trouble, he's gone. Meanwhile, Boxy jumps in, Matumba Man right on top now. Chrysalis, who gets force sapped off of the cliff. In that separation, LSA spots the ward. They need to take that down, so no more vision. But the stun, the control, it's on to both of them. Mickey gets the BKB off Matumba Man turrets. No infest to get him out, but they find Nietzsche. Couple more hits, they bring him low, but can they bring him down? No! Misha, he survives! Insania gone! Secret strike back in the biggest way! Liquid just going a little bit too far there. The dreams start to a fight as they take down Zai right away. No chance bringing out the ultimate. Despite getting down the Wraith Pack, it didn't reduce enough of that damage. He still falls, and when he doesn't snap buy back, because there's no Aegis, right? Like, there's no big prize to claim here, so they know he doesn't want to buy back into this fight. Even though he could get back there relatively quickly, like, would keep going. They feel like they have some ability to still take this fight after this death. They were wrong. You know, they don't end up getting, like, the next big grab. Perfect four staffs, great positioning. Chrysalis to the high ground, back down again. Matu's raised up. He's running around. He can't find anybody. All of those utility Zaya's spells caught in. Oh, yeah, what's up? What he says? <laughs> Zai wasn't able to make it happen, but still looking solid in this one for Team Secret. After that huge win, you can see now 16-14 on a knife's edge. We talked about how close this game could be, and things start to get a little bit wild when it's an elimination match. This close to the Aegis. So, AC next on the docket. Did Zionist was still alive when he was, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> doing the call-out gestures. It's, it's been his thing so far in this tournament. He's the only one I've seen popping up out of his chair. I'd love to see it. You know, I think that it's a testament to sort of this guy and sort of his, his background in Dota. He spent so long just hanging out in obscurity no, and he, he, a lot of Eastern European you tier two teams. mean the techies players, Zayat? Right. Like, you mean the Trian protector players, Zayat? The one-trick pony guy? And then suddenly, as we saw in that content piece, you know, he gets the call up and he is absolutely taken over. And the last bit, Walrus Punch. A Tumba Man gonna get stunned in the duration of the rage. The roll, the chase, Buffy gone. Meanwhile, Chrysalis on the low ground, but Zayas there again with a stun onto everybody. Here comes it's split. only to disengage though. They gotta run. Secret, trying to get out of there. The BKB, he can't do anything to that one. Chase down, look for more. Rezo in trouble, the lift up. They gotta let him go. And they're gonna go for more and more and more. Liquid trying to chase, Rezo gone. And on the back lines, they take down Chrysalis to boot. Liquid in secret, the push and pull. A tug of war. Looking at my heartstrings a little bit here. Everything just from the beginning of these fights, and part of that coming down to the fact that we just, we don't have those BKBs on the side of secret, right? So it either starts well or it goes really poorly. They chase for more as they're going up to the high ground there. Nisha trying to stop this push. Tornado, anything he can use. 20 seconds until the rest of his team is back up. That second Roche is available, though. They could go back and claim that here as a very quick spawn. Oh, that be a big one for them. Respawns are going to be fast, though, on Secret. We're only 25 minutes in this game. Believe it or not, we're going to double up those bracers, those Wraith Packs. Wraith fans, rather, but maybe a Wraith Pack later. Uh, it almost looked like a Walrus kick there with the uh, Punch and the Force Staff combo there. It's probably getting double Force back up. But that's a lot to commit to try and save your inch. And though Zayat's got a huge play there with the Fisher and the combo stuns, you know, it's Zai, right? The, the original. Coming right. through there with the split, and Crystal is just worst case scenario. I mean, that's the thing, right? With no BKB on this draw, as soon as you find the real one, it turns into this huge problem. You just lift her up, wait till the fight's end. Yep. I'll tell you, that Philosopher's Stone's been doing a lot of work here. Besides, though, he's getting close to that Blink Dagger. Uh, almost like a second life for this Earthshaker when it comes to like, having relevancy in this game. Right now, he's just sitting in the back line, find just a Fisher, combo stun, see if he can set up for his drow. And, uh, and his Invoker in that sense. But you get that Blink Dagger, you spot that right moment, maybe you can win the whole fight yourself. And the thing that's interesting about this too is the distribution of farm. You take a look at these net worths. It's Alina and Lifestealer that are way up at the top right now. A pretty big gap. And then you got the three quarters from Secret, but it's Puppy that's making up the difference. This Enchantress needs to have some more impact here in this game. Has already got a four staff. I, I'm not sure what you buy. No nature's attendance. He's just stats. I got the damage, all right? <laughs> No heals happening here. Not today. A illusion spots out a oh, lot of liquid. The, the jump 
They got vision and then have to run away immediately. Foxy is already gone. Mick A finds another. Rezo dead. Chrysalis, the one left behind. Nisha also trying to escape. They decide to turn their sights onto Puppy. Get the D wards here and control this area as opposed to chasing. Radiance current. That was insane. They're just blinking and infesting. They know they just need the vision for this fight to try and give Zai that, uh, that grab, right? He just needs that one toss up. Again, there's no secondary play here. There's no PKP for that Drow Ranger, but now they're going to go for the wraparound play here from the side. Will they be able to take this fight? Puppy wants to run in. Chrysalis is there too. Roche down about a third a HP. There, Zayas. They're still sticking around. Zayas blinks. He gets the stun, but the interrupt. Where's the follow up damage? It's not there. Chrysalis, though. He Boxy, gets out. he kept him out of that fight that entire time, trying to clean up and get this Aegis. It's actually the Radiant that gets the kill, but Nisha he down low, in. he gets out. Can he escape from this one? Chrysalis hitting in the backside. They take down Matumba Man. Mickey wants to find a kill, but the dodge, Nisha gets away. Are you kidding me? He gets away from them. Aegis still on Mickey, but with no BKB, he's got to get out. TP's away. What is this game? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a very confusing fight recap here. We got we got the Aegis single side team Liquid. Everyone who's playing their heart out right now. And it, despite it going their way, I think there was even a snatch, right? They, they grabbed the kill, I think with the sun strike from yeah. Mika, and then he blinked in after. Almost got it. Who got the shark? I'm not sure. Oh, it was the life stealer. No, he already yeah. Regardless. We, we sort of keep the, the game at status quo to a certain extent because you lose a lot of liquid heroes in terms of the net worth, but the big thing is still four minutes left of that Aegis on Mickey. He's playing that carry role out of the mid lane. Yeah, most certainly is. Feels very comfortable doing it now. That's four minutes of uh, the true comfort of having an Aegis as well. He's actually shadowing Matsu right now. Maybe worried about the, a possible play coming up from Team Secret. Oh, that's an interesting choice for the natures, or for the uh, Enchantress, going for the drums and <laughs> queuing up of all things an AC. You know, if there's one thing, lofty goals. If right. there's one thing I learned, it's that Puppy Farms. Never forget Puppy Crystal Maiden's heart. Yeah. Is under attack. True enough. Well, the kill score is even. If there was any doubt about these two teams putting on a show for all you people out here in the crowd dispel those myths right now as there is still some pressure being mounted in Sia with a surprise and survive. That is not one you suspect, that's for sure. I mean, they do see that he has almost 3,000 health, so might be able to anticipate that there's a life stealer inside of him. But the tier 2 tower gets taken. Yep, that Hawk Vision gave them a little bit of a semblance of safety there as they approach the tower. But again, there's still no DKBs here. So, th I mean, it's just so unusual compared to how all these Dota games have been going through off CI, right? We're so used to basically every core having a BKB at this point. And it just feels so strong for Zai if he can get that perfect initiation. Did Liquid read the movement right? Are they going to be able to anticipate where Secret are going? The blink in Zai to nope, his former team. Right. They can't quite catch him. It's all about that mid wave, right? You know someone has to come and grab this, but no one wants to commit on these mid waves. You want to be really far back. Just sort of give him a little blast, back away. Yes. Don't want to get caught in a bad fight. All right. As again, those shards actually there for Boxy was what the one he got. But you can see the sort of macro movement that they're making, trying to control these high grounds. It's secret that smoke up with four. They are showing Puppy on the wave. Can they find anybody with this backstab? And Matsu, he was considering quite a few different items throughout this game, right? Almost went for the BKB on the life stealer, ended up going for the AC instead. Has to watch out for that silence, though. Gets or he gets to... saved by someone. The Hawk is going out first. Oh, he's got a Paladin Sword, too. The Golem up front. He gives it over to Mickey. Find They're not quite going to get there. If Zayats finds somebody here, this could be a huge burst of damage, but it does look like Liquid recognizing oh, the oh, danger. Oh, oh. Mickey he gets caught! BKB, it's not coming out! Mickey is going to drop that Aegis. One life. Can they do another one? Rezo is there. He has the roar available. Gets interrupted. Gets caught. The sun strike out. It's not enough damage quite yet. Mickey, four staff away. Get out of there. Zayats tries to control afterwards. Can they bring him down in time? Mickey in trouble. It's invested. The save again. The tornado lift up on both of them, though. Mickey, he's been living through so long, so much, and he's actually going to do it again. Mickey finally gets brought down by Puppy. The alacrity, the damage, but Tumba Man, they want to bring down Chrysalis. A couple more punches, but all these four steps, it's the bane of Liquid. They don't have a way to get him out, but Tumba Man to fall. Sai needs to clean up. He's got to get a couple more with Chrysalis. He gets up to the high ground. He 
Insania brought down as well. The little turret that could. This positioning, all terrain vehicles on secret. They're all over the place. Up, down, low ground. A TPO by Rezo at 10% HP. And you said Puppy needed to pop off. Yeah, I think he did. <laughs> oh my god. That dude. was an insane. He did the most damage in that last fight. All he did was click. <laughs> so many rounds of it. And Puppy, he found him again. Puppy does not want to be denied. Chrysalis, a couple more hits. This man, he's a lot of evasion. A lot of evasion. Does have a blink away from Zai. Needs to hunt, needs to escape. But Zai, he says no. Puppy is taking his fate into his own hands here. He's like, I'm breaking this curse. I'm, oh. I'm going all the way. And, oh, yeah, okay. That is exactly what they needed right there. Suddenly, this lead gets bursted open to 7k gold. And you can see all the save Mickey, and it wasn't enough, even through two lives. That was only two minutes ago. It right? feels, feels like a lifetime at this point. <laughs> Obviously, a, a pivotal turning point for this whole game. Just such a simple thing, too, right? Like catching this Aegis, but it, it just means that now you're going to get this fight on an even footing for Team Secret, right? Finally finding that moment that they needed. They don't have to play around with this Aegis for the next four, four minutes, chasing them around the map like this. And just so many clutch and tiny moments. And again, it's all about the positioning, right? These four staffs, so yeah. valuable from Seeker. And Rezo at the top of your screen, you can see right now, he actually just barely escaped from Zai being chased down. Oh my goodness. That was so close. And then Puppy, like, you know, you heard Tiger talk about during the draft, right? He's just, you know, and she really doesn't care about Undying. Because as you can see, he's got a whole posse just falling around this entire fight, and they don't really do anything. That's right. And as you yeah. said, he did the most damage in that fight, Puppy, on the Enchantress. Now, looking at the next couple of minutes here for Liquid after losing that Aegis, I mean, there's still two minutes so it's capable of respawning. It's not like they're incapable of fighting, but the fights cannot stop or start with Mickey getting caught. A puppy AC done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a lo lofty goal, I believe we once said. <laughs> oh my god. He is so far out. You, usually you buy uh, AC on your lifesteal. You don't really expect to be countered by the enemy Ench at 34 minutes with the counter AC, but there you are. And the DD, uh, he wants to take it. No, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. All right, Kratz, settle oh, down. Yeah, all right, relax. All right. <laughs> we must affect the weapon. All right, so we'll see now. Uh, Silver Edge already in hand for the Lina. So really good vision. Look at that ward there. That one is giving all the info that they need. Matumba Man hit. Can they blow him up? Oh, the reaction gets him out of harm's way just in time. And well, the roar, the chase needs to get out of there. Save Boxy, get him out. Can they do it? No, the invest came too late. Mickey can't stop this train either. Disarmed, running away. Nisha there with the ice wall, tries to shards, but no. Boxy 2 will fall. He hit him with the ice fire bomb. Get, get the ancient ice shaman in on this. My goodness, secret. They were kicked out of this last time. They were not able to go all the way to the grand finals. They were so close. He was so close to investing back in the boxy too. It was just one big crit there from Chrysalis, you know. The item, he gets better rolls than anyone else actually. And he's seeing it right there. Unable to get that save. Liquid. Have to hold here. And secret not wanting to give him the time of day. Look at Puppy just punch away the edge so strong with that growth bow too. Getting at buildings, Liquid, they don't have the answers yet. They need the rest of their team to fight this. Middle watch and wait. Dias jumps in, the roar, Mickey, they're all hitting him, the snowball, to try and turn and try and get away. Look at stacks. Gets a little bit out. As the silver hit for the break. This tombstone, the zombies slowing him down. Pack two, the couple more punches, but the control, Zion, he's onto both of them, Mickey he gets the BKB off. Matumba Man wants to chase Chrysalis, BKB runs out. Zai thinking about still extending this fight. It's too dangerous. So Liquid are gonna have to lick their wounds, Secret content with taking that lane. Yeah, Liquid, a, a small Pyrrhic victory there, managing to find themselves one BKB charge, taking off Drow at the very least. But of course, they're going to be hanging out there looking for that Roche. And with a uh, Beastmaster and an Enchantress on your team, you're definitely going to know when it spawns, especially if you just happen to be standing in there. So, probably going to be in the know. And we got ourselves an Agonyms, too, here. Hello! 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 <laughs> hello, Zion! Hello! I think that was to uh, the entire Dota 2 community, that hello. 
as he has been making a name for himself here. Uh oh. And with that, uh -oh. the third Aegis, the Aghanim Scepter on Invoker, suddenly they are well in hand. Secret looking so good. Trying to close this out. 21k gold lead. 37 minutes in right now. They just finish a hex too. Zayas has so much power right now. This game is going to be so hard for Liquid to pull back at this point. They've got the Wraith Pack, but they find one. Does have the Andis. Needs to pop the ulti if he wants to get out of there. Not too much more trouble. Walrus Punch finds the back line. Trying to bring down one. Resolution in some trouble. Hit from downtown. Mickey finds another. But there it is, Zayas! He stops him again. The buybacks come out immediately. But Tumbo Man, nowhere left to go. He's gone for 70. Sacred. Mickey. They see the grand finals in their sights. They want to claim this here now. Put this game to bed. The snowball is in. Has to blink out on boxes. Is there anything they got in control? Zayat's on top. He's been there time and again. This is the sun strike, actually. More blinks, though. But the chase is there. And Boxy 2 will fall. None of these heroes up secret wanting to close this game out now. Objective gamers in the top lane, Chrysalis and Puppy, taking down the buildings, walking towards tier fours even. They setting it up, Chrysalis, the alacrity is there, tier four towers starting to drop. Does the dream run end now? Mickey four step away, keeping themselves alive. That's secret. A big jump. They're low on resources on secret right now. It's deadly. Oh, but look at that damage. This moment when you sense oh, the victory, the Ancients exposed. Do they have enough left in the tank? Liquid, they want to survive, blows up science, but do they have any more? The Ancient is falling, and with that, Secret are going to eliminate Liquid. They're going to the Grand Finals. They came down from that upper bracket for one series, and they're going right back up. They want that Grand Final chance once more. They want that best of five. And a team, two teams from that last chance qualifier. Truly unbelievable to find them here on the stage. But only one can remain here. Unbelievable. That's the beauty of competition. There are times where it can be so good and times where you get the jubilation of that team. Unbelievable performance. Team Secret, they move on. to Team Secret here winning and securing their space in the ground.